Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, is my co-host. Is that one Nick Mason? Yes. Wow, it's great to have you here, Nick Mason. <laughs> What one am I plugged into here? That's a really great question. The silver it's, one. Once again, one. it's once again it's chaos at mission uh, control here, isn't it? See, Claire's plugging it back in. She's put us into th- 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 uh, two and three. Two and three. Thoughts two and three. Who's bloody number one? So I'm looking at this and I'm like, is this even any? Anyway, is any of this recording? Is yeah. the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows? Oh, okay. I, look, I see. I see. You see great things. Ahead I see great things in green, green. Times. Green lights. Excellent. Fantastic. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, this is the Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. And this week we've got so many hot topics on the card. We've Mason. got so many hot topics on the card, we might even cut out all the bit, all the technical faults. Do you but, think so? But no, I think we should leave it in. Even if we do cut it out, uh, we do have this back up here. That's right. We're backing it up, baby. <laughs> Uh, I'm recording. I'm recording. Well, I'm recording this one this week, but Collins is uh, is, is is taking the week off, so I'm mm. going to be editing this one. So I apologise in advance. I don't do this as much anymore. Mm. But just know that I'm trying my best. And yes, I didn't put the Planet Broadcasting thing at the front. I know that already. Wow, it's a clever marketing trick to get people talking. You know what I mean? I'm certainly talking about it <laughs> because I brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Anyways, these are the topics for the week. Did he forget about it? Is that what, is that what happened? Did he <laughs> these are the topics thing? for the week, Mason. Feel, feel I'm a new f- listener. What's he even talking about? Oh, that's a great point. Uh, mm. I'm. Uh, so this is what we're going to look at. I'll put time codes below, probably. So we're going to talk about a Batman Joker deleted scene that was revealed. My goodness, there might be some spoilers for Joker for for the movie Joker, obviously, I agree. and also the movie The Batman. Uh, two things. So if you want to skip that, time codes. Also, do you like Voltron movies, Mason? I've never seen a Voltron movie, but I guess in theory yeah, I Yeah, it's would. nice in theory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, We've yeah. also got Deadpool 3 news, potentially maybe the Hulk something. Okay, that's pretty uh, good. We're also, then we're just, it's just Morbius all the way to the end. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know if people have heard. We're in Monthbius right We're in right Monthbius, and uh, we've got some early word about what's going on. Mm. The director's online just... Spilling all sorts of Morbius Have you heard the word about a real turd? (laughs) That's what he keeps saying. And then, of course, in honour of Monthbius. I was like, is there a vampire word that rhymes with herd and word? But then I'm like, no, you've got gold right there. It's fine, right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. But yeah, and of course, in honour of Monthbius, last week we did our best Mm spinoffs, including TV series and movies, and this week we're doing worst. That's right. Let me tell you, I've got a list here that's going to spin that little top hat you wear, Mason, to the show every week. Which way? Which way? Like, will it spin counterclockwise? Will it spin like a like um like a buzz saw, or will it spin? Like, will it like flip off my head and spin around like like a clock and then land back on my head? Yeah, that one. <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Did the very idea of that is bloody blown my top hat off? Let me uh, tell you this. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, at BigSandwich.co where we do a bunch of bonus stuff, mm-hmm. movie commentaries, whatever. We did a Morbius book club that's up there. That's right, right now. If people mm-hmm. can check it out. Anyway, we, we, we did a classic attempt to find a definitive Morbius comic that perhaps. Um, if you were disappointed yeah. by the movie, you might enjoy that. Yeah, but we, we the, there's some okay stuff. That's <laughs> so, all we found. There's some pretty fun stuff in there, I, I thought. I agree. His first appearance is, there's a lot of words in it, let me tell you. And he has to fight Spider-Man, and Spider-Man has six arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And that's what happens. Anyways, uh, the Batman, yes. as mentioned, got a deleted scene, a full scene. This It's mm. just very early in the day to release this. Yeah. It's, uh, Barry, uh, apparently it's Keon, maybe. Oh, it's Keon. But okay. it also we're, might not be. Every week we're getting closer to the answer. I hit up like four or five different how to pronounce. I mm. went to different interviews. It was all different. <laughs> I don't and know. It, it, there's even just interviews of people flat out asking him, and he puts his pinky up, and he's like, "I'll never tell." That's right. That's very Joker of him. Yeah, yeah. But now, so now, of- but prior to seeing this, I assumed this was a more of a uh, oh, post credit yes, situation. Okay. But this, this is evidently is set during during the movie itself. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Smack bang in the middle of month month be a really bold time to drop this, don't you That's think? That's exactly right. Yeah, really? There's another Batman on the mm. loose. So yeah, we did actually mention this. This was it was deleted because it kind of it didn't like it's it, the, the director said it was like interesting, but it didn't really add anything to the story. And yeah, I think look, you also mentioned if you drop him at the start, then you're like, when is he coming back? It's you know? um yeah yeah. What do you think of the look though? Yeah, well, if we, yeah, we're talking to look uh very interesting. Mm. I mean, we don't get a. It's mostly out of focus, but a lot of people have sort of enhanced it. Yeah. Uh, but it's chemical burns, right? From his. Back yeah. Of acid I mean, I, as I understand it, I read a, a snippet of an interview. I think it was Matt Reeves and and Barry. Ken. That's right. You got it. And and they was I think, may, because again, it's one of those things where it's completely up in the air. I think maybe the idea of it initially was that he was born like that. 
Yeah, the it's, smile, it's Lady Gaga yeah. style. He was born like this. The smile, and, the smile thing was apparently that. So that's like congenital. So he's born. He was born with the ability. He was not not an ability so much. He was born with the inability to frown. Basically, he's always seems to be smiling. Yeah, which is seemed it, which is more in line with like the Nicholson Joker who can't not smile. That is true because like, he his his facial nerves were cut or what whatever. It reminded me not so much the look of this actual Joker that mm. appeared in it, but in Batman Earth One. That's a more okay. gruesome gross, real kind of universe. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Which, like, a lot of the Batman is. But it also felt very, kind of like the way it was peeling, the New 52 with the Joker who cut his face off and then right, put it back yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Could you see, like, the back of his head and it's all scarred and he's, like, missing patches of his hair. And mm. I was going to say, in terms of the look, fresh new look, yep, hot new look, in terms of, like, delivery... It's very Heath Ledger's Joker, isn't it? I think so. It's, yeah. Uh, but like, what do you? We've kind of st- we've kind you, of yeah. we've kind of stalled on Heath where Ledger's. Do you, where do you go? What well, you I guess that's that? a good question because I, I, you know, there are different versions of the Joker. I mean, you know, like your Mark Hamill, yeah, uh, voice of the Joker is more like a big and theatrical. Yeah. But I guess if your character is in prison, mm. you you got to go smaller than that because otherwise so. people will be like, keep it down. <laughs> We're trying to bit read. of shush. We're trying to read our newspapers. Bit of shush, get... the Joker. Yeah. I'm trying to cut the, the number of days I've been in here in the wall. <laughs> bit of shush. I've got to say, I, like, I didn't dislike it. I mm. thought it was interesting. Yes. But I am glad they cut it. I don't think it would have added to the movie. No, really. it, uh, like yeah. like we said, it's a bit of um, Chekhov's The Joker. Yeah. You, 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 you'd expect him to show up in the third act and do something. You'd expect, you know, the, the, the seawall to break or something and then the, the Arkham... Doors come unlocked or something. The, the power failure releases all the prisoners and he's in there or something like that. Yeah. Also, I think the scene explained too much. About the Riddler? About the Riddler agree, and about yeah. about what was going to happen. So in the movie, we are we, we are heavily into spoilers right now, folks. Yeah, we're in Monday's. But, uh, you know, at the end of the movie, it is revealed that the Riddler thinks he is helping Batman. Yeah. You know, he thinks he is he is ridding Gotham of, of evildoers, which he is yeah. in a lot of ways, whereas Batman just thought he was a deranged killer. But in, in this deleted scene, the Joker literally says... He's he, like you. He's, he, likes he, you. he likes you a lot and he wants to do stuff for you. And I yeah. think we'd go, well, that's... That's what happened. That's what happened, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I was, also, it's been pointed out by a few people online. Uh, online, you say? Yeah, online, on the internet line. Uh, where you know, I love hands, the I love the Intel. He can do so much on the Intel. I agree. Line. Anyway, he hands hands in the folder. He can get he, stamps.com. That's he can thing, get pets.com. It? Really? What's a pets.com? Like, I mean, currently a lot of dead pets, I would imagine, because that <laughs> site's been out of business for a while. Oh no, they didn't yeah. clean them out at the end. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. That's sad. But the, he gives back the folder to Batman that's missing the paperclip. Oh, so he gone escape with that? He's gone escape. I mean, he doesn't by the end of the movie. Obviously. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he just needed a paperclip. <laughs> That's right. You know? My please, like my plan is coming to fruition, and he just clips some postcards together or something. Finally, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I thought it was a fun little oddity. I also don't know whether it will speak to like what we see of the Joker next, mm. even if they stick to that look. Yeah, maybe they won't. They've got time to kind of reinvent it yeah. even again if he is going to show up. But also, I think if they're releasing this. I think this is canon. Well, I was just going to say, if if it if it doesn't appear in the theatrical version, is it canonical? Yeah. Are they going to release when it comes to to streaming and and uh, Blu-ray? Is it going to be a director's cut with that scene in there? Yeah. Because I mean, Matt Reeves has said, I think in the past, no, what came to what, it, yeah. what came to the movie, what came to the theater is is my cut. I don't. And, and it's three hours. But so people like, change yeah, their tune. Don't it's they? It's all there. You mm. know what I mean. Also, it's doing very well. It's obviously the biggest movie since Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, until until Morbius, obviously. Oh my God, I can't wait to watch Morbius every day for the rest <laughs> yeah. of my life. I look. I want. I would like to say. I think it's not canonical. I mean, okay. I think they, they what, ma- what do fans generally? I think, think they'll make it like Alan. Yeah. What do you What do you think? Or they might even they might put it in. No, they actually they, they couldn't, could they? I, I don't think it should go in. No. Yeah. I was going to say they could put it in the sequel somehow, but I don't know if they... Maybe put it in the prequel. Maybe put it... In... Well, it's also interesting that the idea that we didn't even touch upon that... They already had big that adventures. Mean, that means yeah. that Batman and the Joker had big adventures, presumably in year one. Maybe so, together. They had a good time. They had a fun time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because in the in Batman year one, Frank Miller's Batman year one, he fights a bunch of gang uh, g- mobsters and so yeah, on and so forth. That kind of stuff. And then at the very end... Uh, Gordon is like, mm, he's better. I hope he hope he can deal with this Joker Wait, Batman fellow. Batman Year One or yeah, uh, but also Batman Begins. 
That oh yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's yeah. A, the same thing. So yeah, I guess that's that's where it's slotted in. Yeah, interesting. You're, you're in Batman year and a half. Wow, I love Ooh. how they change things, but also it makes me mad. Uh, Mason, it's time for another bit of news. I love another bit of news. Thank this you. By the Hollywood Reporter, uh, Red Notice director Rawson Marshall Thurber. Fake name? No, real guy, real name. He's developing a Voltron live action movie. Okay. Apparently, a absolute bidding war, like you've never seen, Mason has busted out between Warner Brothers Pictures, Universal Pictures, and Amazon Studios. Apparently also... To distribute this, I guess. Yes. Apparently, oh. also Netflix, who currently own some of the rights to Voltron, or at least yeah. they've got that show. So yeah. I think it's more distribution. Mm-hmm. Are not interested in this. Right. So... Uh, They're not. So, well, I mean, that's classic. That is classic Netflix, isn't it? They've done their dash. Yeah. Mm. Look, I've always wanted to see a live-action Voltron. I don't care who knows, <laughs> quite frankly. James, but, James. Now all the listeners know. Oh, no. Yeah, I should be embarrassed, yeah? Yeah. I mean, and you could edit this out, but you don't know how. I've never, know. I'm, not, I'm not even listening you've, you've back to You've lost the this. touch. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even put the sting in. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I did it at the top. That was for marketing purposes, but I think mm. I just didn't know how to do it, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, but look, what? here's the thing that worries me about this. Go on. Because I would love to see Voltron in live action. Like That was like one of the first things that I liked as a kid. You know mm. what I mean? James, you're going to look back on this in, in 20 years and you're going to be like, I was really worried. This is you would be like. This is what I was worried about in terms of the live action Voltron movie. <laughs> this but, is going to be your know, like kids' high school graduation or something like that. I have. That's right. It's going to take them twenty years. Oh no! More than twenty years. And to that's graduate. my fault. That's I'm, your fault because you were too busy talking about Voltron all the time. But the Netflix series mm. is incredible. Yeah, it's right. Good. Mm-hmm. The original show is it's not very good. I agree. Right? Sure. It's, and it's like a weird mishmash of. Stuff they took from Japan. The car one is unrelated, and they mushed yeah. them together. There's apparently also a third one. There's a there was a Gladiator one or oh. something. I can't remember. But yeah, yeah. Like it, it was a it, it was a series of toy commercials. Yeah, folks. exactly. But the director of this is the oh, look. To be fair, I haven't seen Red Notice, mm-hmm. but he did Dodgeball, he did We're the Millers, and he did Skyscraper. And look, some of those like Dodgeball. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I remember it being or whatever. Uh, but like, oh, no, okay, you know. Mm. Yeah. Sure, you know. Maybe he's got a really good vision for it, but do you remember liking the movie Skyscraper? Yeah, kind of. I think okay. we reviewed it on here. I didn't hate it. We did. Yeah. We fought in that wall of televisions at the end or we whatever. Thought, we thought he wasn't going to make that jump because he only had one leg. <laughs> he and also it was a leg. really long jump. It was a really even long. if he had two legs, you probably couldn't yeah, do it. Yeah, he probably couldn't, nothing, he couldn't do it. So, no, again, like, I didn't even... I, I, wouldn't, I didn't even hate any of those movies, really, I don't think, but, like, it's not like, wow, this is, like, yeah. the person... Mm. To, like, if they were, like, you know... I don't know who does who does big robots specifically. Steven Spielberg, yes, AI. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think that that could be cool as well. But anyway, oh, wouldn't be wouldn't be bad. Who did who did robot jocks get them back? <laughs> I'm going to look it up. But in the meantime, I read an article this week about speaking of Netflix. I read an article this week about the cancellation of the Babysitters Club show. Apparently, there's a show on Netflix. And isn't it really people like that? show? Well, people like they? it apparently, yeah. and it did good, really good numbers. And it won some awards, yeah. and it's like it's in the it's it's not like they're not trying to age the kids up or whatever. It's just like a nice show for kids, and they have their adventures or whatever it is. But it, like it's pretty much an entirely an, an article about like they interview the creator, and they're like, "This did really well," but then they just changed the algorithm for what gets a green light for another season and what doesn't. Oh, and, and they're just like, "No, not not again. We're not we're not doing it again." Was this the? I saw, also saw an article. I didn't read it, but it was titled something like. Netflix keeps cancelling TV series, so I'm just not going to watch them. Like it was something yeah, like that. Uh-huh. Was that the article you talked about? This is a different article. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god, there's, there's James. There's been so much discourse this week. I don't know. Is that allowed? Uh yes. Okay. This is this will be my one bit of news this week. Collings, edit that out. If no, you, no, no, Collings, listen. I need you to come back and edit that out if Mason's wrong about how much discourse there was. There's so much <laughs> discourse, James. There was a bunch of stuff about Netflix keeps cancelling things, and I'm where where like what, what what are you doing, Netflix? Is it all going to come crashing uh, down? Because well, maybe because what I, I think you kind of and they keep it, making it more expensive. Yeah, but you keep you need brands and loyal, and not only that, you need like people to be loyal. And to be kind of bound to those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if and people are just like, why should I watch? Like that taboo Tom Hardy show came up and I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's from 2017 and they did one season and they're talking about maybe they might do another one in three yeah. years or whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm fucking not watching that. Well, exactly. It's like there's so many 
shows where you go all that they're talking about Voltron. I can't, I can't have time to watch this. <laughs> there's, there's, there's. Gotta wake my exactly. kids up and talk to them about Voltron. <laughs> hey kids, there's no time for a good refreshing <laughs> night of sleep so you can go to school and learn. I gotta talk about Voltron. <laughs> but yeah, like you, you, anytime there's an intriguing premise, I always look at it and go, are they gonna wrap this up in a way that is satisfying, or yeah. are they just gonna cancel it after a, a season or two seasons when it's right in the when we're, when we've just started enjoying the characters and the plot and what have you? And, and is he got you gonna buddy? Come on, what are you thinking over there? Yeah, I, I mate, think them. Yeah, what do you think? Blank. Just Voltron, I guess. Blank. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's gonna be. I don't know if we're gonna have a big mass exodus of. Yeah, maybe. But also the the other bit of discourse. Apparently, Spider Man. No Way Home is on streaming this week. And so I've, okay. I don't know if you've seen this, but this week on Twitter for me... It was is it just, free streaming? I don't think so. Okay, right. I yeah. think it's... But it's it's just... It was just... This week Twitter for me was just like individual still frames of the movie and people going, look at the lighting on that. Oh, that there's sucks. a lot of like, this sucks, we hate this. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It was the, there's the shot of Flash Thompson is in the city and yeah. Spider-Man appeers behind him or something, whatever that is. And uh, how look, do you feel about this? I mean, I don't disagree that like there are shots in that 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 don't look good. Yeah. Like onion. Mm. And there's some stuff on the bridge that looks a bit wonky, but also I guess you, you, you got to factor in that it was also, it was shot during a pandemic. It was, that's true. But it's also, I don't think it's strictly a pandemic thing with Marvel. No. And uh, I was actually a corridor crew did a video this week and they had one of the guys who worked on Shang-Chi on uh-huh. and he talked about the final fight where he's, it, fights the Mandarin or whatever. Uh-huh. And they had an original background and they were like, ah, oh, it doesn't look any good. So they just had to literally like. Who did the corridor crew? No, not them, but they had the guy on and they had to, like, it wasn't filmed in front of green screen, but they had to cut this guy out, like them both fighting out and then put it on, on oh, a Marvel did. background. Yeah. Marvel did. Okay, because like, right. it doesn't look that good. So it's like stuff like that where it's like, well, that's kind of why maybe some stuff looks murky because yeah. you, mm-hmm. you, you're not lighting it properly and it's not mm. filmed under the conditions that, yeah, would, right. that mean you can, you know, make these kinds yeah, yeah, and make, yeah. make it look a certain way. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think that it looks, I mean, again, it is that, it is that, if I'm watching this movie in, in a, for for one a, a scene that happened, you know, a, a shot that lasts one second, if the light is the shadow, the light and shadow don't match up, I'm I'm probably not going to notice that unless it's a long shot and it's yeah. really egregious. And yeah, on Twitter, yeah, it's not yeah. a good shot. Like it doesn't. But I I also like I think there is some value to being critical of this sort of stuff, mm. or you know, any anything any huge. Thing. I don't. I don't think it makes me enjoy any of these movies any less if you, if you go, oh, you know, this is a bit shady or whatever, or this yeah. is poorly. Because I th- I kind of feel like any time with this big franchise stuff, like any time they get away with stuff with no criticism, yeah. they're just like, we'll do it again. Do it again. You're absolutely and, right. And, and I, I've said that with the writing of No Way Home. Like yeah. I, I enjoyed it as an experience, but there was a bunch of bits where I'm like, you could have just saved that with one a sentence. And I, what, my fear is that like, two phases down the line if we're still going, yeah. people will be like, these movies are bad now. <laughs> because the people because they just went, doesn't matter if we, we don't yeah. need to fix that, people will still love it. Yeah. Just absolutely. shove it out the door kind of thing. Yeah, and also the things about that movie that I did enjoy, it's not like it's none of that stuff mm. is that important to me for a movie like that. Mm. Like my favourite scenes are in that are like the three Spider Men just just chatting. Yeah. Just being like, what's some weird stuff you've fought? I can't like, remember. Yeah. <laughs> I got it in the head. But, like, that's the stuff that I remember. Yeah. So, But that's because that's not what I'm kind of – if there's a yeah. like, two-second shot that looks like mm. shit, like, I'm, that's not what I'm there for, yeah. you know? That being said, and, I, and you know, it's been uh, done yeah, to death. Do better. They should <laughs> They should fix the colours. They, like, I, they I, just, I agree. It, and it, it's also it's like – It's got that weird digital grey haze But a lot of that movie, like, doesn't look like that yeah, also, yeah, yeah. you know. It's not – universally and uniformly mm. terrible. Yeah. You know, it's just there are moments in it where it's like that looks odd. Yeah, but somebody's know? got to commit to to like, I don't know what it is, like that digital that digital yeah. video like greyness. Yeah. Give it, give it, a, get somebody in there. All right. Get Corridor Crew in there, James. I'll do it. Get him in there. I'll give him a call. Uh, I was just going to say, um, the director of Robot Jocks was Stuart Gordon. Okay, what else? He also he directed Reanimator and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, that's fu- what? No, he didn't. He, apparently, he did. I thought. Uh, I thought that was Honey Shrunk the Kids. Which no, the the original. Let's have a look. I thought that was the dude who did um Captain America. Oh, Joe Johnston. Yeah, it was. yes, it Joe was. Then I don't know why. It just says known for here. I don't know why. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, he was the writer. He wrote it. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's yeah. a great movie. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Let's get him in then. Let's get him in to do Voltron. Mason. He also did Fortress. 
Oh. The movie Fortress. I remember the movie Fortress. I remember the bit mm. where Christopher Lambert held his breath and floated out in space. Yeah, yeah, that was and cool. And then he went to another airlock. Yeah. Wait, did you do Fortress or Fortress 2? Fortress 1. Oh, no, I haven't seen that That's on one. the ground, I've isn't only it? seen yeah. Fortress 2 yeah, 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 <laughs> for yeah. some reason. Mm. THR. No, this is from Deadline. Wow. Marvel <laughs> are apparently developing a Nova project with Moon Knight writer Sabir Pizzada. Oh. Uh, they didn't say specifically what it's about in terms of like, is it a show? Is it a movie? Richard Rider is mentioned in the article. Sure, right. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to do the Richard Rider is dead and his son finds a helmet story yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or a combination of all of those yeah, things. The father and son flying through space, blowing up planets, killing, bow, bow, destroying bow, bow, entire bow, civilizations bow, 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 bow. Now, with their laser guns. What has he got to do with the Nova Corps again? What's going on there? Ooh, which one? Richard Rider. Well, uh, gosh, good question, James. I love questions. In, I mean, in the, in the comic books, the Nova Corps are... So in the mo- in the movies, the Nova Corps are a bunch of they're like a space force, and they all have like space fighter jets and all that. Yeah. We, we, we saw them in Guardians One, did, right? Yeah. But in the comic books, they all have like a cool helmet and it gives them a suit with superpowers. They're more like Greenland. They're more Greenland, more like a Captain Marvel kind of character. Yeah. So I guess I don't know. In the in I think in a fairly recent Nova comic book. Or the the Nova Corps was destroyed, but all the, the power of the Nova Corps goes into one helmet, and then the kid gets it. Yeah. So maybe that's what it is, because basically the whole a lot of the Nova Corps were destroyed. Yeah, they're all dead or something. Yeah. So. Oh, in the comics and also in the yeah the movies you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of them were. They made that big net and then they exploded. Yeah. They went hold the big net and they couldn't. So the Finnewich, hold the net. And he's like, oh, 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 hold this net. I'll hold it. That's right. So there you go. Nova something that's been in the works for a while. It's do you think it'll be John C. Riley? That'd be fun, wouldn't it? He does yes. have a family. Yeah. Could be him. Mm-hmm. That would be great. That's I what would I'm love saying. that. Yeah. And I hope he gets absolutely shredded. I hope he has to. <laughs> He's not happy That's about right. it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you see a Nic- I saw a Nicolas Cage interview this week. Where oh, I asked my God. Him about his, it's Nicolas Cage goes on the internet. God, he's, a f- he's an odd duck. So, I'm, yeah. He's very strange. He is, yeah. <laughs> no, but not in a sinister way. No. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always yeah. the... <laughs> But, He's uh, just got a yeah. There was also a a um. Oh, there was a specific thing I wanted to say, but yeah, go on. I was going to say there was. I, I guess he's doing some sort of old school vampire movie. Is it the um, image? Yes, in the makeup and whatever. And it's it's. He's uh, like a Bella Lugosi looking dude. Yeah, and apparently so I saw the color image first, but apparently it's. He's been he's costumed and made up for black and white because oh, the nice. movie's going to be yeah. black and white. So if you if you take that color and you've seen and turn it to grayscale, you go, oh, I get it. He looks exactly like yeah, a Bela yeah. Lugosi Dracula, which is why it looks like that's that's how they did it back in the day. Like yeah, yeah. if you if you watch, I don't know the Munsters or something or the Adams Family. Yeah, they're all in. If you look at the actual sets in color, they're like very colorful because that's how it played. Yeah. on black and white TV. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't we all love that? Anyway, so he was asked about, <laughs> uh, you know, they ask him. Secret questions. Yeah. But he kind of ducked the did you pay, pay $150 million for a dinosaur skull. He kind of ducked how much he paid for Interesting, it. Interesting, But yeah. he did say that he gave it back to wherever it was from. Yeah, it was... Um, I can't remember. Mongolia. Yeah, but then they didn't give him any of the money back for it. Well. So maybe that's why he's doing all the things he's doing. But they asked him about his... You know, it's been much debated whether his abs are real in Ghost Rider. Oh. And he was like... They, that is one hundred percent me, but I don't do that anymore because nobody believed me that I actually did it. Yeah, and I'm like, go. oh, is that even true though? Like, I can't even because you're an actor, right? He's <laughs> yeah. a good actor too. He's an Oscar winner. Yeah. Also, there there was some stuff about. I think he said like, yes, I did do a bunch of video on demand and streaming stuff. Yeah. And straight to Blu-ray and what have uh, you for his family as for, well. For it? yeah, and mm-hmm. and to pay off his IRS tax yeah. debt and all that sort of stuff. But he's also like. I committed a hundred percent to everything, and I you know agree. what he did. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. God, I hope he doesn't get cancelled. <sighs> just yeah, give I know. Us, yeah, just just give be, us one. Just be this level of weird forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sean Levy, who of course directed recently the Adam Project, mm-hmm. he also directed another, the Adam Family. Uh, yeah, the Adam Family, he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> just a regular family, but um, <laughs> he teased the Hulk in Deadpool three because ah. he's directing Deadpool. He, said, he tweeted, he said, little did I know, and he tagged both Ryan Reynolds and Mark Ruffalo, and then hashtag Deadpool. It's a picture of them together. They're lying in front of a suitcase, and on that suitcase is the sticker of, is a sticker of the Hulk. Oh. So I think we're going to get some Deadpool Hulk stuff, which is good because I think now that he's in the MCU, he can just hang out with whoever. That's true. You know? Yeah, why not a uh, friend of the movie, Mark Ruffalo? Exactly. And the idea that they can 
Like what I what I like his interactions with other people, and I think that's a real strength of those movies. Yes, like him and Colossus is fun. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like those kind of pairings. It's it's good. It's and so throw him in with somebody else, and yeah, you know, because him on his own, is he? No, it's it's fine. But like, yeah. him being annoying to other people is more interesting. Very true. Yeah. So and, and you, you know, be annoying to a, as many personality types as you can. Like we've had, you know, yeah. Russian and Stoic. Yep. And um, that that teenage warhead lady. Yeah, that's right. You know? <laughs> exactly. That nice young lady. That's right. And why not uh, uh, Ruffalo's Hulk? That would be fun, I that think. That would be fun. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's month Mius, everybody. We all know that. That's right. It's on all our calendars. It's on my Morbius calendar that I obviously have and will continue to have for the rest of my life. That's true, yes. So it's always going to be... Oh, you had one printed for the rest of your life? Yeah, it's all, no, it's just going to be tw- the 2022 character ca- calendar. Uh-huh. I'm just going to keep using it. Okay, that's, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just more and more scrolls over it. Yep. Oh, my children have a test that day. I'll just scratch that out because <laughs> Morbius is coming out. <laughs> so, uh, this is via comicbookmovie.com. i got a lot of Morbius talk. Uh, there's going to be... Some minor spoilers, okay, yeah. but it's mostly just so I, we can make fun of this. That's right, terrific. So that's the, how it goes. God, I'm loving two weeks of making fun of Morbius. Me let too. Me tell you. Uh, so according to several sources, Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. The Vulture, does not actually appear in the movie despite featuring in the trailers. The villain does, repeat, uh, does reportedly show up in the film's post-credits. There are two, apparently. But the sequences are said to be completely different to those shot for the promos. Classic now, Sony. Now... I got back on their shit, mate. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that more BS they're famous for. Thank you. Um, so I initially I'm like, why would you want to take out that stuff that's in the trailer to connect it to the the to connect Spum to the the MCU? Yeah. And you said you suggested it's because somebody up top, like a Kevin Feige type character, was yeah. like. If this comes out and people connect it to the MCU in any way, it will damage the brand of the MCU. Yeah. Like the movie is that bad, and it will like you can maybe isolate it even within the Sony universe. You know, yeah, maybe right. they they don't want that either. You know <laughs> no. what I mean? I yeah. wonder if they gonna if they've taken out any of the references to Venom also that we've seen in the trailer. Also, apparently, you know, there's a few scenes where well, there's one of them where he walks past an image of it's Tobey Maguire's Spider Man mm, in the trailer, right? Yeah, that's not in it apparently. Okay. So like, there's none of that <laughs> stuff going on. When we when I saw the Batman, yeah, there was a trailer for Morbius in front of that, and it is fascinating to me that the trailer, at least the version that's playing in Australia, is still the one where they do the Venom joke at the end, where he's like, "I'm Venom," where it's like that movie came out five to ten years ago at this point. But and Venom too, though. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Venom too, and it's like that was last year. Wasn't no, it? no, but it feels like five to ten years ago, <laughs> and I'm like. That is so gone from the public consciousness. Yeah, People will be like, well, oh, I sort of remember Venom, mm, I Venom. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, also, the director, uh, Daniel Espinosa, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, as, mm-hmm. Uh, he's just on Twitter just spoiling the movie, yeah. including the post credits. Is this a situation where he's like, they've taken this away, it's been like they've edited a bunch of shit out of it or put it in and reshoots, and I'm just like, I'll promote it, but whatever. Right, yeah. Like he's, he's not being openly hostile. But this is that's not helpful, is it? No, Obviously. I don't think so. No. Yeah, because people are. Well, I, we can talk about it. I've got a bunch of reactions. Okay, here. I don't want. I don't want to know what happens in the post credits. Oh no, I'm not going to say but, that. Uh, but apparently, oh, well, but well. you know what's interesting? Uh, it's pretty easy to avoid so far on Twitter. Like unlike No Way yeah. Home spoilers, where it was just all over the place. Yeah, nobody seems to. But these are apparently upsetting. In terms of uh, the post credit scenes, that really? has been the reactions. <laughs> no. Again, I don't know them. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, that's the absolute last ditch. I, I, I feel confident we have seen this before, like maybe for a DC property or something. Suicide where, Squad, maybe? Maybe, where it's Justice just like, League. where they've clearly gone, oh, you've got to stick around for those. Like, it's the last ditch attempt of like, yeah. you've got to stick around. You've got to pay for the price of admission just for the post credits. I mean, you, you clearly, nobody seems to like the movie, but you. You won't get anything else in future if you don't see this. Yeah. Is these post credits. Interesting. Mm. Anyway, so I've, actually we can play a little game, Mason. And okay. I guess it's kind of a callback or just a call. It's it's not a back. We, we do them all the time. We're getting a call. Well, you have to guess the review from the whatever. Okay. Uh, one's um, This is one's for Sonic 2, which is also okay. coming out this week in Australia at least. And one is, and the other is for Morbius. Okay. So you get a guess, okay? Okay. It's by Neil Vag who says, hashtag Morbius walks a fine tightrope between gothic vampire melodrama and comic book fantasy. Jared Leto embodies Michael Morbius with a dedication no other actor could. The pacing is brisk and it features some great visual flair. Oh, is what you've done here is you've changed. Have you changed? No, no, I have not changed a single thing. Huh. 
Morbius. Correct. Nice. That is as kind as any of these are. Okay. That's the kindest <laughs> I one I thought you. I thought you'd done a little bit of homework and you changed. Like James Marsden does a real fun, fun job here, and you've just changed it to. <laughs> no, no, Morbius. no. This is from Jeff Vega who says, "I've seen Sonic movie two and I already miss it." Sonic movie Correct, two. That's right. Mm-hmm. This is from Sab Astley who says, "Well, Morbius is about as bad as you're expecting. A 2005 plot collides with a visually confusing with visually confusing CGI to create a bit of a snooze fest. But don't worry, they've saved the worst for last, featuring some of the worst post credit scenes <laughs> no. you've ever seen. Sony are off their rocker. That's Morbius. That's what right. I love about that <laughs> is just." Post credits, like how do you? How bad could they be? How could they? How bad could they be? <laughs> like they, for the most part, they are an off afterthought, or occasionally it's like, oh my god, it's going to be that character, or whatever. Like we, ninety nine percent of it's like, oh, it's that character who's going to be in a movie in a year or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But to be like, these are bad and awful, <laughs> incredible. Because even Justice League Two, Justice League Original, yeah, had Superman racing the Flash, that's and it's like that's fine, right? Mm. Anyways, this one's from Kevin Pollowy, who says, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the Godfather Part 2 of Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Oh, that's good, but that's Sonic 2. That's correct. This oh, I, I read also this week, apparently, Ezra Miller, in, in Peacemaker, yeah. at the end, Ezra Miller had it like... Oh, he deleted a bunch of stuff, didn't there's, there's like There's like several minutes of him doing Aquaman has sex with fish jokes that they cut out. Oh, really? So they're on the cutting room floor. Okay. So. Yeah. Bring those back. Bring those back. They're probably yeah. going on the DVD. This is from Cameron Howell. Morbius is just as disjointed as boring as you'd expect it to be. Clearly butchered in an edit by a studio who have no clue what they wanted to do with it. Not that there's a good film trapped in there. Mid credits are a joke, but stick around if you like rolling your eyes. Oh, nice. That's Morbius. That is Morbius. Mm. Brutal. This is from Escape Film Club. Hashtag Morbius provides <laughs> proof. Sorry. No matter how many famous faces or shiny visuals you squeeze in, Sony will always find a way to impressively misunderstand basic storytelling. Wow. Fuck. Oh, that's more obvious. Thank you. This is from Nikki Novak who says, Just saw Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and it's a love letter to video game lovers. Had a ton of fun with it. Unlike a lot of blockbusters, the third act is bananas and the, str- and the strongest of the film. Oh. Jim Carrey reigns supreme. Uh, that's Sonic 2, but the little the little dig at uh, other blockbusters was about Morbius. <laughs> that's I think. Right. It's from Ren Geekness who says, In Morbius, Matt Smith gloriously hands, hands it up uh, in the place, uh, all over the place. I don't know. And, and Oliver Wood delivers some visual flair to the action sequences. Aside from that, and uh, the bad plotting and messy CGI, confusing editing and worse sound mix uh, result in absolute incoherence. But the post credits manage to outdo it all. God, that's <laughs> what is fascinating. Happening? I cannot wait. Do not spoil it out there, folks, for us. Don't spoil it. Not because it, we don't want to be like, oh, no, we don't want to know the future. I want to be like... Yeah, I want to... I want to know in the... I want to s- feel it because I'm like... I, uh, also, I think like... We we do occasionally get invited to media screenings, you know. Well, we so, got so one for so. this, but it literally is the exact same time as anywhere else. Exactly, that's yeah. what I was going like, to say. Exactly yeah, the same. That's where time. I'm going with that. Like it, it, the the truest yardstick of whether a, the, uh, a, uh, a movie studio thinks a movie is good or not is how close to the movie's yeah. release we get the the. I saw the Batman like a week earlier, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. week clearer. Yeah. I don't know if you remember me talking about that. Well, you wouldn't time. shut <laughs> up about it. Shut up. Anyway, that is about uh, Morbius, unless. <laughs> Unless Matt Smith is in Sonic 2 as like Charmy B or something. He might be. Yeah. And this is from Nicola Austin who says, well, Morbius is unfortunately not great. Some really shoddy VFX and 2000s formulaic plot and definitely not as fun as Venom. Really confused at the future of Sony's Spider-Verse following the post credit scenes and editing. Matt Smith is clearly having a blast though. So there you go. That's sort of kind-ish. Mm. So people like Matt Smith. And to be fair, none of these are like, we fucking hate Jared Leto. Yeah, right. You know, so, and as someone who does not like Jared Leto, mm. that's... Not nothing. There you go. No, that's <laughs> you know? great. Did you see Matt Smith this week was also like, they asked about his character. He's like, I don't know. I, I couldn't understand <laughs> any that. of their motiv- his motivations. I had no backstory. I don't think it relates to the character. I think I have the same powers of Morbius, but honestly, I just used the script and I did the script or Oh, whatever. is he not a cop? I thought he was a cop or something. I think he gets a Morbius powers also. More, well, that because you need someone to fight. Because it's Sony. It's the, it's Sony the, you yeah. fight the same thing as yeah, the yeah, whatever. It's, it's the, they just use the, the Venom blackboard and they I don't, swipe I don't Venom. like Venom, but if it's like Venom, but it's not fun. <laughs> I mean, what are, what are we even yeah. doing here? Wow. I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> it's month beers, baby. <laughs> so next week we'll be, uh, we'll do more beers. Uh, we yep. might squeeze in a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Oh, things, yeah. I can say that. Yeah. God damn. Those, those post credits. Please nobody spoil it for me. Please. <laughs> I just, <laughs> please let me see them. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't want to mute all the Morbius words on Twitter. Okay, let me let me ask you this. If they got leaked on Twitter, would you watch them without mm, the movie? Oh, I'm probably not. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I want, a, I want the build up. I want yeah. the absolute crushing disappointment after yeah. a very average movie, mm. I think. Yeah, because you can't, again, you can read them. The director has mentioned Just told, them. Yeah, well. told what they are. But it has to be like incoherent and universe breaking and maybe they roll in another Spider-Man. No, because if it was that, people might like that, right? If they're like, yeah, oh, my true. God, it's Andrew Garfield or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? Or oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's find out. Yeah. Now, because it's month bias, uh, we're obviously, we're returning to the topic mentioned up top mm. where we're talking about spin-offs. That's right. this time, mm. spin-offs of bad things. Yeah. Uh, no. Spin-offs of good things, I guess, but the thing is bad. Correct, yes. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. what's happening here? Yeah. Right. It's going to be some genial rambling is what's going to be happening here. I think so. I think so. Here's a good one to start with. I remember seeing this at the cinemas and being like, why did this happen? I mean, I also kind of get it. (laughs) All right. But also, why? Oh, what is this? U.S. Marshals. Do you remember what that is? Oh, the spin-off of um, of Don't Tell Me, The Fugitive. That's right. Yeah. So they basically take everybody in The Fugitive who's not Harrison Ford, the U.S. Marshals. Or the one-armed man. That's right. Because he's dead. He's dead, probably. Yeah. And they chase Wesley Snipes around. Because they they had to... Do they do the pipe? No, thing again? no, they didn't do oh, the pipe. You got to do the thing. pipe. That's fascinating, isn't it? I I think that's a solid idea. Yeah, because it's like I mean the problem. I guess the problem is also that the team isn't the focal point of that first movie. It's not the reason why that movie works. Like it's mm. partially. It's like it's having Tommy Lee Jones and but it's the pairing of him and Harrison Ford. Yeah. and finding out what Harrison Ford is up to. And I remember seeing it with Wesley Snipes. I can't even remember. What did Wesley think about it? That's funny, but I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Even, Yes. I will never stop walking into that. I know. <laughs> and I'll, because I'll never stop making it, despite the fact that I'm the only person in the world who enjoys it. But I... Robert Danny Jr.'s in that movie. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes. I don't remember what his crime was. And I think that's kind of pivotal. You know what I mean? Oh, the um, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, or supposed crime. Wasn't he? I think he was. Uh, wasn't he? Uh, I think he was like a special forces soldier. Or oh, something. That's maybe why he'd, he's... maybe he'd seen a crime, a bad crime. You know? Oh, he should never see a crime. Yeah, he saw a big, a big bad crime. I think. Interesting. He, have you James, seen James? James? Yeah, I have. They'd never make. Yeah, because I remember because the look spoilers for this movie that came out in probably 1998 or whatever it was. Yeah. You think you think Wesley Snipes is on the is the bad guy because he's the fugitive. Yes. Two. But it turns out it's Robert Downey Jr., I think. I think he's the bad guy. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't remember that at all. Okay, great. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, okay, they pursue a fugitive, Mark Sheridan, played by Wesley Snipes, who attempts to escape government officials following an international conspiracy scandal. There you go. Here's the thing about it, though. you can ne- James, you can never make it these days. Why is I'll that? tell you why. Well, not in this form, because they'd have to bring Harrison Ford back. Oh, definitely. They'd have to. Or the the original. They br- there's no way they would they would make a sequel to a movie like this and not bring back the original fugitive. Yeah. I mean, it also and he had, they'd, they'd be like, boy, this guy's an expert in doctor doctoring. We really we really need a doctor shaving his beard and dying his hair. Yeah, we need. I mean, there's only one guy we can turn to, <laughs> and then then it's yeah, Harrison Ford. You'd and need go, a, yeah, Richard Kimball. You'd need a scene where they need to go to his office or something. And he's like, yeah. you've got a lot of nerve coming out here. I jumped out of that mm. pipe. That sucked. That's right. I've still got water up my nose yeah. from it. You're lucky we have great chemistry together, Tommy <laughs> Lee Jones, because otherwise you'd be out in your ear. They keep trying to remake The Fugitive, though, right? It is keeps it, coming back. Is in there a TV form. series? Yeah, there was. And then, I don't know, there's other there's things. There's also... I mean, it started, obviously, as a TV show. They're, yeah. they're do they they are they're actually doing three equalizer the the third equalizer yes. movie with Denzel Washington but there's already a, de- a, 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 there's, a there's an equalizer yeah. TV series yep yep yep, yep. right happening right now yep 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 with somebody a lady yeah. lady equalizer Queen Latifah I want to say is equalizer is equalizer they're very good mm. um, I just put planes because I feel like it's in I don't know it she equalizer thank you you're very welcome planes I didn't say it but like that's clearly like. You're tricking kids. Oh, planes! The spinoff to to cars, yeah. which is not a is not, not a Pixar the, movie. No, well, no, it's I think it's Disney, but it's not related, mm. and it's not in the the cars verse. Okay, because right. Because everything's a car, not a plane. Yes, it doesn't make any sense, right? Even the bugs are cars in that universe. Okay, how I does it work? I don't know. I don't know how many cars movies I've seen. In fact, if in fact I've seen any of them, the last ones about so rehab. everything's last a car. There's no rehab. like, is there a helicopter guy? Oh, that's a great question. Isn't it, though? I don't know. Mm. It's not about that, though. No. It's about cars. We talked about this a little bit last week, though. Go on. 
I mean, X Men Wolverine Origins. Origins yes. Wolverine. I never even know what it's called. Like, what order are these words supposed James, to be? James, it's been drilled into my brain. It's X Men Origins colon Wolverine. Okay, very good. It, I mean, Maybe there's no colon. If that character and that, not only that, the character and obviously the actor Hugh Jackman were not beloved, that would have stopped that completely, that yes. movie, you know? Mm, yeah. Though it did make a fair bit of money. Mm. But, but yeah, just like atrocious, like boring and weird and strange cameos and it looked like shit. It's just no, and they steadily got better, those, or, those right? red movies. And then took a dive. And then took a, in Logan. Oh, no, I mean, um, you know, the other ones. Yeah, he's not in any of those yeah, ones, really. True. He's sort of in, I want to say Apocalypse. No one remembers. No one remembers and it's not important, but yeah. There you go. What what have you got in your list, Mason? Gosh, what do I have? It better be something absolutely outstanding or I'm going to spit chips. Wow. James, I just want to talk about Gary Seven. That's all I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Gary Seven. <laughs> that's, that's Is that the, the Gary Seven Wikipedia? No, I don't fact? have anything here. I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna James, I'm just so gonna freeze. That, then? Just a thing that I'm reading. <laughs> what unrelated? Yes. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's Gary Seven? In at, 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 right during the middle of the production of the original series of Star Trek. Gene Rod- oh my god! I've got a whole list. Gene Roddenberry yeah. had an idea for a uh, TV series called Assignment Earth. Yeah, and the original I've pro- and, that and they came up here. they came up with a spec script for it. So they they wrote a script for the for a pilot episode. And the premise was there was a man named Gary Seven. Yes, and he was sent back in the in the original pilot. He was a man from the future, and he gets sent back to what is the present day yep. United States, so the sixties, which it always happens. They're doing it at Picard at the moment. They're like, we're in the year twenty twenty four. That's right. Are you? The cars are slightly blockier, and everybody's wearing a vest <laughs> look out everybody's wearing a taupe vest um but anyway they go he goes back to the, the 60s and the idea is he's he's doing he's like a spot a future spy and he's doing stuff to prevent you know a disaster happening in That's the future interesting. that is interesting so they went uh roddenberry went to i think cbs the uh, uh channel that star trek was on and was like what yep. do you think about that and they're like no so they so he was like okay let's retool this so in the in the tv episode He's not from the future. He's from he's from present day, like nineteen sixties timeline. But he's from an alien planet. Okay. And the Enterprise has been sent back in time to the sixties. But because a, because they're out in deep space, they can't visit Earth. So they have to visit like something that's sort of like Earth with Gary Seven. On. No, no, they go, they do go to Earth. <laughs> they go to Earth in the sixties. Okay. And Gary Seven has been beamed from an alien planet to present day nineteen sixties Earth. And they have to rescue him or something. Yeah, they have to like team up. They're, 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 the 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 United States government is launching like this satellite missile launch platform or something like that, and they've got to stop it because otherwise the world's going to end. Or what? So and then and and this all happens, and then like um, the the episode was produced and released, and. They were like, Roddenberry's like, what do you think about this now? And they're like, still no. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, this no. is worse. What yeah. I love about the episode, though, if you've seen it, in pr- two things, pre- in previous episodes, going back in time was like a re- like a, like an ordeal. It's a huge... It was oh, a huge sometimes thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes <laughs> it is. But in this one, Starfleet just goes to the Enterprise and goes, hey, we heard something weird happen in the 60s. You want to go back in time to the 60s? And they're like, all right. Yeah, we'll so the episode just starts, they're just back in the 60s. Amazing. And I just love that, again, it's I, I just just the idea of like, and and just go to regular wardrobe. Just go to, <laughs> <laughs> we don't need any. But the other thing that I love about it is at the end, Gary Seven is chatting to the... the, the um, Does he come with them? No. So he doesn't join the No, he doesn't join the not crew. Not even for an episode no, or two. No, he doesn't join it for an episode or two. But basically there, he's talking to Kirk and Spock and, and they're like, Kirk and Spock are like, Gary Seven, let me tell you, we can't tell you, we, we we can't reveal too much, but we've looked at we've looked at your we've looked at history, all of history, and let me tell you, you're in for some exciting adventures. Let me tell you that you you're gonna have some real real absolute zingers of adventures out there. Has he turned up in anything else like he's, in reboot? He's turned no, he's turned up in the com- some comic books, okay, I think. That makes sense. And I think there was maybe like IDW comics or something like that did an assignment Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, comic book was okay. like four issues or whatever. Wow, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Star Trek because there's so many. So there was going to be... This, these are just some 60s ones. Okay, I'm ready. There was a Hope ship, which is going to be a space hospital ship. Okay, that's great. So, you know, I guess kind of like a general practice. I don't remember Hope ship, but I'm... But there was, no, I, some def- of these are just ideas and not actually. Oh, I see, because yeah. they were... Def- I mean, they, you know, there was the original series... Also, I should point out, I don't know which ones. Okay, <laughs> there, there was definitely plenty of original series episodes where, like... Kirk, go, the Enterprise goes to like a distant space station. He's like, "Oh, my my ex girlfriend's here." <laughs> good, you good, yeah. 
Uh, there was a Harry Mudd. They, they want to do some Harry mm. Mudd stuff. Who recently came back for Discovery? Um, yeah, which was Dwight from the Office. Yeah, that was really fun. Uh, there was going to be a Spock and the Vulcan something. Probably a band, a family band. Probably like yeah. the Partridge Family. Yes, there was a uh, Spock and the Vulcans. Yeah, there was one. This is fairly famous and ended up ended up becoming what the movies were. Before Star Wars, there was Star Trek Phase 2. Yes. So you probably know a lot about this, but basically their plan was to relaunch the franchise with all of the crew who were still willing to do it. Yeah. New sets, new ships, new designs, uh-huh. more updated special effects. Because the kind of... The the the, the, fa- the fans the, the fans of Star Trek yeah. never went away. It was always airing. There was that animated show which had yeah. everybody in it also, I think. They were like the the, the pioneers of conventions and people yeah, dressing absolutely. up. As, yeah, You know? But then when Star uh, Wars hit big, I think that was the kind of thing where they went, huh. But also I think a bunch of that stuff was also worked into Discovery, like a lot of the concepts. I think so, that, yeah. Yeah, like... If I couldn't tell you specifically what. I mean, there's, there's, yeah, there's been plenty of, I think, you know, discarded Star Trek concepts that have just been yeah. put into new stuff. But yeah, like, God, Star Trek the motion picture's not very good. I agree. And they're, they're, they're weird white uniforms. I hate it all. I haven't. Actually, have I seen it? I <laughs> yeah. don't remember. You have not seen it, I don't think. Yeah, it's okay. so slow. But isn't that good, though? Don't people like the idea of that? Like that it's not just pow, 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 pow. No. Because Star Trek 2 came out and there was a lot of pow, pow, pow in that and people liked it. So. Yeah, okay. And enough. also uh, Star Trek 2 pioneered like their, their like luxurious like red flannel uniforms oh, with yeah. a turtleneck. Oh, yeah, my God. Absolutely. <laughs> the best uniform in my opinion. Do you think so? No. Uh, we were mentioning Discovery, but Section 31 was getting a spinoff until very recently yeah. with Michelle Yeoh. Which They've had a lot of... Um, Good, like, like spin off novels and stuff like that, which is yeah. like the. There's a bunch of. Yeah, it's like. Well. Uh, yeah, and I think probably video games as well, like Star, like Starfleet Special Forces, like yes, Black Ops. Absolutely. I think it's fun. Uh, there was something called Starfleet Academy, which is going to be a TNG spin off where it was a ship and it was mostly run by Academy students. Okay. So they're just like, oh, we don't know what we're doing. Oh, the ship's falling into the sun again. And I'm just going to name a bunch of things here. So there was going to be a Wharf spin off. There was going to be a Riker spin off. Spin off. Spin off. The Wharf spin off. Thank you, Riker. I think, um, who played Riker again? Uh, you know that guy? That guy. He's always sitting in a chair backwards. And yes, he's always playing the trombone or telling something. Telling you a secret. His name is. This is the thing that happens to us once an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's make it multiple times an episode. What? Don't tell me. Could don't. We, could we think about who his doppelganger is when he gets... Tom Riker. Yes. I think. But So does that help? No. It's Jonathan Frakes. Jonathan Frakes. Frakesy. I didn't look it up. All I could think of was... Uh, you I did. Looked you looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> how did all you I, know? All I could think of was... When I was typing and looking at the screen, yes. how did you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, I thought maybe you were doing something else. Like you had, like me, you had like a notes app open. What are you looking at no, there? No, I'm, I'm looking at something else. Yeah, um, but what is it? I'm curious. <laughs> I was just thinking of Ripley's Believe It or Not. And you were like, oh, what's yeah, his yeah, real yeah. name? And I'm like, Ripley? Uh, Ripley. Ripley's. Dean Kane? Did he do <laughs> Ripley's Believe It or Not? Yeah. Uh, so there was going to be an animated, there was a talk of an animated Kirk Picard series in the early 90s. Oh, generation style. Of generations, I guess. But uh, it was just, Picard was just dragging Kirk's corpse around. Exactly. Yeah, timelines. Weekend of Bernie's. Whatever, yeah. Uh, there was going to be a Kelvin anima- animated series, you know, said in the Kelvin timeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was going to be a Ferengi show, okay. an animated show. Uh, there was going to be a Captain Sulu animated adventures also at one point. So they just it. they were just like everything. Sure. Anyway, did you ever watch Girl American Psycho with Mila Kunis? No. So that started off as like a, a different movie, serial right? killer, and she's killing some. I haven't seen yeah. it. Killing various people, and then they went, "We can actually market this absolute piece of crap mm. by shoehorning in." Uh, that she was, that she was the cousin of, was a cousin or something like that of Patrick, of Patrick Bateman. Bateman, and I think he's, you might see the back of his head, or you get a phone call or something in it. So right. they basically just tacked on this That's thing great. and called it American Psycho Two, and everyone hates it. Everyone mm. who's in it, everyone around it, mm. no good and no fun. That movie I enjoy. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's good. American Psycho, but it is very entertaining. Oh yeah, mm. like the bit where he's like. The business cards, and then you yeah. go online and somebody swap the business cards for Pokemon cards or whatever. That's where we're And then you're like, that's fun, isn't it? Uh, what about there was an episode, an infamous episode of Supernatural called Bloodlines. Oh, how long did that go? That's that tw- this show? Seven, no, 12 years? Oh, Supernatural. Is it still going? A million, a million shows. A million 17 shows. years? Something, something like, like that. that. I think it okay. started in 2005 and it maybe ended last year. The guy who played Gabriel, I think, has been cast yeah, he's in a Harvey show. Dent. 
There we go. Yes, in, in yeah. that in, the Gotham, I want to say. Bad, Gotham, Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. There we go. Yeah. So, so that show's going to go. For I it. went from 2005 to 2020. Also, there's going to be another s- animated prequel spin-off thing happening for that. Apparently. Terrific. Anyways, <laughs> Bloodlines was it was in the, one of the latest seasons. I think it was like season nine, where okay. you meet like this uh, particular f- this group, and it's like a mafia family, but they're also like monsters. So the okay. idea was, that I guess, it was Sopranos meets oh sure Dracula. Sopranos meets the Monster Mash. Yeah, and people hate it. Interesting. Hate that episode. How many seasons did you get through of Supernatural? I got to like nine, I reckon. Okay. I got pretty far. Let me yeah. ask you this, James. Yeah. Because I watched one episode, I think. Sure. Um, one to five are good, and then it's yeah. kind of... Their dad, yeah. he's dead originally, but then it turns out he's not dead. Yeah, something like that. And how many seasons is he in at most? Because it's... Um, because it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yes. so he gets famous. Yes, that's right. So he doesn't do a lot of... I don't know whether he comes back for later seasons or not, but he drops off probably around season four okay. or five. So maybe. he wasn't just a main character for 15 years after no, dying. Okay. but maybe he did come back. I okay, couldn't right. honestly tell you. But yeah, he got famous from various other things and, and moved on. Mm. But if we're talking about... Pilots that just were wedged into regular series, Mason. Yes. Uh, season nine of The Office. Oh, they went they to a farm, right? They went to a farm. Yeah. And they cast... Dr- Dwight's farm. Dwight's family. It had Thomas Middleditch was his brother. Yeah, and right. I can't remember who else was in it. But that was a filmed pilot, which they then chopped up into a regular episode of oh, The Office. Oh, I see. Right. And it like they it didn't... I don't know whether it didn't test well or the studio didn't like it or whatever. It was probably okay. both. And so it's just this very... Odd. I remember like, being very odd. Like so, yeah. very specifically cast episode. Yeah. And it's like these are actual comedic people. Yeah, yeah. These aren't people who just and they mostly stand there. Right. Like, they don't do that much. These well, families. I mean, I guess I guess at a certain point the American office, it would be a bit like the Simpsons. In this in if you were an actor, you might be like, I'd love to be on the, the office just for one scene or one episode. Yeah, or whatever. totally, yeah. Th- that's interesting because I would have I sort of envisaged envisage that episode as they made a regular episode of The Office to see if people like those characters yes. and then they would spin it off. But you're, you're Which saying would probably it, be the way to... Yeah, but you're saying they, they, they were like, let's just assume this is yeah, going to do well and do a they pilot. They cast it all, all, all well enough. Wow. Is this a prequel or a spin-off, Mason? Go on. I think it's probably both. But Dumb and Dumber when Harry met Lloyd, when they recast... Harry and Lloyd oh. from Dumb and Dumber. No, that's a. I feel that's a prequel. All right, let's skip that one. Okay. <laughs> let's skip. If over they that. um, who who what, name any supporting character in Dumb and Dumber? If they spun one of those, I've off never seen own. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's you know, send your tweets, but I haven't <laughs> and I won't. Okay, I won't see it because I bet it's one of those things that's actually not that funny. Like mm. now, having like if you just watched it now, yeah, yeah, you know, or you maybe know it's amazing. You know, what I'm I'm regretting, and this What's is that? this is an aside. I'm regretting not really getting into Riverdale. Because apparently it's, oh, just, it's gone bananas. It's gone mate. absolutely bananas again recently. Yeah. Apparently, I for, I was in Riverdale for like a couple of seasons, and it you was, were in it. Yeah, I was in it. Oh wow, it was good never for you. not entertaining. Yeah, like, there was always something going on. This Someone, is a tweet. This is this came out earlier today. Riverdale update. This is on Twitter from Eyepatch Wolf. Archie and Betty survive a multi-universe merging bomb blast by hiding under a table. Veronica hires an assassin to kill her dad. Cheryl is possessed by an evil witch. Betty encounters the show's 15th serial killer. Archie and his dog develop superpowers. Is and that he, real? Yes. <laughs> so he says, these are real. These, these are always real. Apparently, this is one episode as well. <laughs> this isn't like the entire season. Wonderful. Yeah. Hey, man, just keep people watching. God, if, it's, it. if it's entertaining, good. Yeah. Like, I... I there are people that complain about that show, and maybe I would complain about it if I watched it, but I don't. Yeah. So I'm loving the idea. Like back in when I was a kid, I would I would read Archie comics, and they they were all like hanging out on Riverdale High or whatever. Yeah. But they all had like solo books where weird stuff would happen. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Jughead was in the Time Police. Oh yes. And like Dilton had a it was the nerd character. He had like a secret lab and had supernatural adventures or whatever. Okay. So and they were never yeah. they were never canonical but they were never explicitly not canonical yeah. either so my my because it, it didn't matter at the time no. but as a kid i'm always like i like the idea that they all had like a weird secret gig <laughs> yeah. on the weekend but and they, they, never they were all sworn other. to secrecy with the <laughs> like they were all like one of them's a superhero over the weekend and they're like what do you do on the weekend they're like nothing that is fine absolutely nothing Here's so i'm glad all the insane stuff has gone into the show agree. a show i do not watch here's something that you did watch and you love Go and on. people have been asking us to do this for Caravan and Garbage for years. Yes. Uh, Supergirl. Oh, the movie. The movie is a... I mean, I know all the Arrowverse spins off mm. and whatever. And there's probably some cancelled pilots in that, probably. I don't know. Oh, there definitely is. Um, There's a there's a number of Suicide Squad episodes. Uh, and it's it's Diggle. Was it, you know Diggle. Was it killed by the movie? 
That's a great question. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm always under the impression that the testing ground. Thing, it's a, right? the, the CW stuff is a testing ground for the, for the movies to see what works because they got Michael Jai White as Bronze Tiger. Well, that's true, and yeah. so on and so forth. Like you were saying, like why? Why would you? Why you get? Why that? you get a movie guy to yeah. you know do a couple of episodes of this thing? And it's like, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But Supergirl is uh, so she turns up to Earth as the cousin of Superman. Oh, and, James, James, let me oh. tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, because I've, I've, I've brought I've brought up my special my special list here. Okay. Uh, they didn't spin it off because the CW was was always gonna was already gonna spin off the Flash. So they're like, well, that's uh, enough. Oh, like, that was pre the Flash. This was, was pre it? the Flash. Okay, yeah. So this that. was season two. It was an Arrow episode. No, I yeah. do remember that episode. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. still on board there. Um, and there was like Harley Quinn's voice as well. Yeah. yeah. And then they uh, then the, then Suicide Squad. So <laughs> apparently Warner Brothers was like. No, we, we we can't have two versions of these characters as they aren't well known. But I'm yeah. like, who cares? Yeah, who cares? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yes. I mean, now we do kind of have. Yeah. We, a we do kind of, of everything. We we do kind of have two versions of a lot of the Suicide Squad characters. The flash from the movie met the flash from the TV yeah, yeah. show and whatever. Well, I mean, people get it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like we had. We now we have two versions of a lot of the Suicide Squad characters. We have Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad, and like, how, you know, Flag is barely the same guy. And like, how how quickly though are yes. you going to burn out on this multiverse stuff? And will it be because of Morbius? It won't be because of Morbius. <laughs> Because I'll immediately forget what happens in Morbius <laughs> okay. as soon as the movie ends, unless those post credits are pretty. Yeah, you know that's interesting. No, I will forget about Morbius the, uh, as soon as we finish the podcast. Okay, good. That is my that is my goal. That is my goal. Yeah, <laughs> that is my vow. Yes. Anyway, so Supergirl has one returning cast member, and it's Jimmy Olsen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it came out after three, but before four. I want to say, uh-huh. and the idea was that yeah, it was going to be a whole franchise and whatever, but it, it's really shoddily made. Okay. Like, clearly on a budget. Yep. She fights like a witch and a dragon at the end. Yeah, or something. right. It's just nonsense. It's just, mm. and it's, and it's also, it's painful because it's one of those examples, the same as Catwoman and Electra, who also happen to be spin-off movies mm. with with female leads, where they're like, oh, people, you know, they mustn't like these, but it's like, no, that's that's crap. Yeah, you like, made, you've a, made yeah. a terrible thing. Of course, you, I mean. Don't like it. And you made what? How much was money so this was made? you were saying it was before four, before yeah, four? I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find out right now. So yeah, 1994. So yeah, what? yeah. So they would have. So it, what basically people would have seen was three Superman movies of declining quality. Yes, and exactly. then uh, including the third one, which is barely about Superman at all, and then a bad <laughs> Supergirl. Where well, people are already tired of the concept. Yeah, that's and then right. and then they're like, and here's a bad version, but it's a it's girl Superman. People, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's it's, that's not a failure of Supergirl. That's a failure of I mean, the movie was bad, also. Also, and it was uh, it cost thirty five million and it made fourteen point three million. So that's, that's never, less. That's never good. Uh, did you ever see the next Karate Kid? That was I saw that on a few With, lists. Um, With that Hillary lady Swank. Hillary Swank. I thought it was fine. Like on on all honesty, I haven't seen it since the nineties, but it brings back you know the original Mr Miyagi. Okay. It's got a new student, and there is mm. like. An element of, oh, I wish, you know, Daniel LaRusso was in this or whatever. Is that but what they say? Yeah, that's what everybody says to each other yeah. all the time. But the idea of, like, having Hilary Swank in the lead role, mm-hmm. and that was before she was, like, proper famous. Yes, that's true. It's good casting, you know? Mm. And, look, I again, I don't think it's great, but what an opportunity to also bring her back for Cobra Kai. Have they? I No. I don't think, oh, that was my I, question. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whether she... And I said it. I pr- expressed yeah, my question. I don't know whether she would do it. In a healthy it. manner. In a, that was very respectful. Mm. Hey, idiot. <laughs> Is she back for Cobra Kai? <laughs> but... That stupid show you watch because you're stupid. I do watch that show, but um, and it is stupid, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, because they they did they recently did Karate Kid three and the dude with the ponytail and whatever. And, you know, Ed Kreese goes to get him and he's like, "We gotta we gotta take down Daniel Larusso." And he's like, "I was what were we even doing then? I was harassing a kid. I was doing a lot of coke. Like, uh-huh. I'm not I'm not that person anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, right. Which basically explains Karate Kid three why this grown man is like yeah, harassing right, right, right. Daniel Larusso. But I don't know if Hilary Swank would actually do it. But, it, I mean, they got Elizabeth Shue back, mm. you know, so maybe they'd do it. Yeah. Here's a fun one, Mason. I'm ready. You're going to love it. Okay. There's a few Brady Bunch spin-offs that they tried. But there was one in particular called Kelly's Kids. That was about the Brady's <laughs> neighbor, Ken, okay. who accidentally adopted more children than he meant to. He accidentally <laughs> adopted. Okay. Okay. It's too many boxes. Sure, yeah. yeah. How many kids you want? Ah, oh, 15. <laughs> oh, I know. I meant one, but I said 15. Oh, I was thinking about how many no. eggs I wanted to buy at the supermarket. That's right. 15. 15. 15. <laughs> I don't like that. No, I bought I bought 12. This guy got what was coming to him. No, I bought I buy 12 and I buy 6 and then I open one of the <laughs> one of them. And I throw some away. This guy's the street. He should be in jail. I know, but instead he's got too many kids. <laughs> a nightmare. So there you go. That's fun. Now, uh, let me ask you this, James. Yeah. What about that episode of Stranger Things that is just 
Eleven oh, goes yeah. to the other city and she's like, well, these, these kids are just like me and they're very interesting. They've that got was, co- they've superpowers got and, they're so in- and they're interesting. That was confirmed, right, to be yeah. a definite attempt at something yes, else, Yes, I think right? so, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It's interesting that they haven't tried to do more of that. Is was, it because it didn't work? Yeah, well that, uh, and it's also, I was about to say this before, but you know, like Family Guy has like had the Cleveland show and yes. American Dad is probably linked. I don't know. I don't watch any of that. But how has there never been a Simpsons spinoff? Oh, yeah. Good question. All there has. Well, <laughs> and I mean, Futurama and got, is... Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of... I think it's probably just because Matt Groening got very busy. <laughs> yeah. But like if you do... like in this, And also Disenchantment is set in the same universe as well because yeah, right. there's a time-travelling... Well, over. then I say close enough. Okay, fine. Close you enough. You seen those new Stranger Things kids' haircuts? I had a look. Yeah. They're, eight, they're 80s haircuts. That's, why, oh, their yes, hair, they that's are. why their haircuts are so bad because it's just the 80s and not everybody had like a Farrah Fawcett haircut. Well, that is very true. Not everybody in the 80s was Steve with his beautiful hair. That's true. Everybody just had hair that sucked. Now, last week we also talked about um, Happy Days. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. And that did well, but I've got a bad one for you here. Okay. This one's called Chachi Sells His Soul. What? It's a I know there was Joni Loves Chachi. <laughs> yeah, there's that. No, this is different. <laughs> this is, um, or maybe bloody getting married is bloody selling your soul. Oh, yeah. I don't mind saying I hate my wife, nice. Mason. I'm one of those guys. I don't know if I've told you this before, but I'm one of those guys who tells all his friends that he hates his wife. Yeah, nice. That's me, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's a backdoor pilot. The spinoff actually aired before the Happy Days episode that introduced the guardian angel named Random. Yes, Random. Another, yes, another guardian angel concept. However, watching Chachi sells his soul, in which indeed Chachi, <laughs> sorry, so Chachi strikes a Faustian deal with the devil's nephew. <laughs> okay, so that's not fun. even the devil. Okay, sure, they sure, couldn't sure. even get the real devil. Wow. I guess would that be too hot for television if you got the actual uh, devil? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that'd be too hot for television. So there you go. Yeah, if this is one I like. I, I I don't think I ever watched this show. Okay, but I, I just love the idea of this. Charles in Charge had three episodes in the final season which were failed attempts at a pilot. Three episodes. Three attempts. <laughs> they really in each, run. a character would visit somewhere where there would be a character that looked suspiciously like one of the regular cast members. So Ellen Travolta, who played Charles's mother, had an identical twin sister who ran a car wash in New York. What? Willie Ames' character, Buddy, had an identical cousin. I'm sorry, but they were the same actors, right? Yes. Willie Ames' character Buddy had an identical cousin working in a hotel in Hawaii. Nicole Eggert's character had an identical cousin living in New Mexico. But what I love about that is also like, we're going to do a spin-off and get this. It's going to be set in a car wash. <laughs> Incredible. Why not? Yeah. What was that Danny DeVito one? Taxi oh, or taxi, whatever. Yeah, there you okay. go. That was set in yeah, a I car wash. Was, but I mean that. <laughs> yes. But James, this also. Alan well, Travolta is John Travolta's sister though. I just Googled yeah, it. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't know that. But uh, um, that also led to like, we've. Just speaking of The Simpsons, like The Simpsons was so successful, one, because it was, you know, anim- the, an- the novelty, the animation, yeah. but also because it broke out of like the absolute doldrums that sitcoms were in at the time, yes. which is, again, just people in a car wash. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Apparently. That was all, that was so dull. That, that is, that is so bizarre. So it's, it's weird that they, was Chachi dying or did he not Charles. want Charles. Yeah, sorry. So, Ch- oh, and Ch- so what, what are we talking about? Are we talking about Chachi? We're talking about Charles. Charles. So, so what, what, the show was ending, yes. but they planned to continue a spin-off with the same actors in a different in different location. roles, yes. With Charles, or was he Scott no, I think Baio? So, no, I think he was, was going, going to be gone. Do different. They were things. just like, what if, the, what if, what if his aunt ran a car wash? I guess you know, if if you if this is your meal ticket, you know, and you're yeah. like a, you know, you're you're like third or fourth build on this show, and it's going to be cancelled because Scott Baio doesn't want to do that yeah. anymore. And they were like, what if, yeah, what if you ran a car wash? And I think also part of you would be like, yeah, i got the charisma to pull this off. I mean, I'm doing well on this show, aren't I? This is a popular show, and I'm John Mm -hmm. Travolta's sister or whatever. That's right, yeah. Well, speaking of spin-off television shows. I mean, it's either that or wait for a a cameo in From Paris with Love in 20 years. (laughs) Is that true? No, I don't know. I think so. No, no. I'm thinking of John Travolta. Of course. Mm. So there was three MASH spin-offs. Yes. I know I talked about this last week. After MASH. Nobody cares about this. I'm sorry. The Radar Show. Yeah, so After MASH. Was the show where it had uh, it was it was the Colonel, okay. it was Klinger, and mm. it was Father Mulcahy, and they work in a veterans hospital in the state on stateside. Okay, went for a couple of seasons. When uh, is this set? This would be set ju- after Mash, so just after, like so the, 60, the early sixties. Yes. Okay. So it's set immediately after the final movie, okay. and the final movie, like famously, is like the the highest rated thing that's ever yes. been on television. That's true. Anyway, this got obliterated. 
destroy. Oh, no. The idea was to keep introducing, like reintroducing old characters. Well, it's like, oh, Hawkeye's going to visit or whatever, but it uh-huh. never got to that. But it, like one of the things that really crushed it was the A team. There was also Trapper MD. Now okay. Trapper famously left the show after season three. I because say? Hawkeye had a best friend who Called was Trapper, Trapper, but then he left and he was replaced by another best friend who was more or less the same. No, no, one, no. They, one it, had curly hair. They right? were very different. They yeah, no, cast yeah, them yeah. differently. Yes. Mate, and I'm a big Mash fan. Okay. And I will not have such Mash slander. Well, I'm a bloody big Mash fan. Go on. Like a mashed potato. Yeah, like a mashed potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Okay, cool. A bangers and mash situation. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Anyway, Trapper MD, the spin-off show, didn't star the actor. He left the show because he was was of the understanding that was equal build. Right. And to Alan like Alder. Was, yeah, it, it felt like he kept, like a lot of the stuff kept going to Alan Alder or whatever. Okay, yeah. But then in hindsight, uh, he's been like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. I sure, probably should right. have hung around. I should have been in the the, the most highly rated yeah. uh, f- series finale Because it went ever. for like 11 seasons yeah. or whatever. Anyway, the show though is more of a spin off of the movie and it doesn't star that actor. So I think it was right. more of like a legal thing. Oh, I see. Right, Where they right. went, okay, we're going to do this thing. And the so la- we, this is a character we own, so yes. we're going to use. Okay, right. And the last one they did was Walter, which was, so. Who, there's a character called Raider, whose real name was Walter. You know this. I know who Raider is. Mean, I know, is. but he, he ended up leaving the show like a couple of seasons before the end. Okay. It's, I remember the reason why he left was because the, he was famous for in the show where he'd know when the helicopters of wounded were coming in. Bef- he could hear them or sense them before they arrived. Because he had a radar Because he had a radar He had a plate in his head. I don't know. I don't know if that's the reason why. <laughs> he had a dinner plate in his head. Yeah. Just sticking out like a radar dish. <laughs> yeah, but apparently he, in real life, yes. he, a chopper flew over his house and he did that look that he does. Okay. Look at, like instinctively. Oh, and he's I like, see, right. I've done this for too long. Right, okay. So he quit. Okay. Klinger took over his role, yeah, uh, right. essentially. Anyways, he obviously liked the character, so they made one episode of a show called Walter, okay. which is the same font as MASH, and it's even got the dots Little in stars, between, okay, yeah. and where he basically becomes a police officer. Oh, all right. So there cool. you go. Okay. A tiny little police that's officer. That's fun. So that's fun. You know what's wild? Friends never had any spinoffs. It did, Mason. Did it? Joey. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> that's on my list. Right. Let's talk about it. I want to talk right. about Joey. So Friends, obviously. I was like... Man, not a Gunther never got a, got no. a spin-off. And or, he died. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Phoebe's sister was in Mad About You, but that doesn't count because that came first, And I that's think. all connected and mm, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah. 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 But so, Joey, let's talk about Joey. Okay, so basically what happened was, uh, I'll read you the overview. Okay. The series centers, uh, this started in 2004, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Let me check. God, remember 2004, 2004. September 2004, yeah. So this uh, series centers on Joey Tribbiani, who was struck uh, struck, struck out by on, lightning. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Struck out on his own. <laughs> and, and he got moved, radar powers. Right, and he moved to Hollywood, hoping to truly make it as an actor. After reuni- reuni- reuniting with his high-strung sister Gina, a strong and sexy hairdresser, Joey moves in with his genius 20-year-old nephew, graduate student Michael, who is a rocket scientist. He begins a tentative romance with a superintendent, uh, uh, Alexis Garnett, and becomes close friends with fellow aspiring actor Zach Miller. So, yeah, it's just Matt LeBlanc. And his sister is played by Drea DiMatteo, who... Is in The Sopranos. Is in The Sopranos. Mm. So, yeah, which was also running at the same time. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Sopranos, like, they only do 10 episodes a year and they... Some years they didn't make them for yes, whatever right, reason. Right. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It was ten or twelve or something. I can't remember. Yeah. They varied from season to season. So yeah, this went for two seasons. It also had um, what's his the Peter Stormare? Sure, that's not how you pronounce the it, devil as from the, Constantine. Yeah, as the boss. Yeah, right. Uh, in um, yeah, in the in the salon, and mm-hmm. I've seen a few episodes of it, and it's just it's just whatever. You know what I mean? I think it went the way of like. The Michael Richards show and, you know, that George Costanza show that's not George Costanza, but it's really just yeah, George right, Costanza, right. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, who's who's who in this who from this series still wants to make some money from this and keep yeah. this going? And Matt LeBlanc was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it or whatever. It's going to be a few years before I'm a host of Top Gear or something. <laughs> yeah, or right. I'm in that, that British show that was good. Remember that one episode? Yeah, I never saw it, but it yes, good, I've good heard good, good things. Hi, the last season of Highlander, the series. Yeah. Uh it was basically just Duncan McLeod, who's the main guy, just meeting a bunch of female. Not Connor McLeod. No, but he's, he's not in it at all. No, he's in the first episode. Thank but God. Anyway. <laughs> but in the last season, like there was like four episodes in a row that were just like, "Oh my God, it's another female immortal from my past." <laughs> Are you interesting and charismatic? Are you? Are you though? Hmm. <laughs> See which one the audience likes. And eventually what they did... <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've seen so much Highlander. I've seen every season of Highlander, I think. <laughs> but um, what they, the, the, it was 
so one of the one of them was spun off into the, a series called Highlander the Raven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wait, was, was that Raven the one that Ben put the clip of in the Caravan of Garbage recently? Don't know. Okay, let me check. Okay, please do. Yeah. But her character on the show wasn't called the Raven; it was just a different. What they did is they were like, we like the idea of a character. We like the idea of the name Highlander the Raven. Yeah, that's but we don't like, dark. but we don't like the actor who was the Raven. <laughs> so we'll just put. We'll just take another one of the of the. We'll take a different woman. We'll put her in Highland of the Raven, and we'll make up a thing in the in the like the title sequence about how she's the Raven. <laughs> Why have you seen so much? I Islander? don't know. Because I it was love on? Islander. You know what? I loved it. I loved how French it was. <laughs> I the series got was very French. Not the first couple of seasons, but in the later seasons, it got funded by the French. So was it, it called was Raven or Highlander the Raven? It was called Highlander the Raven. There was also a show called Raven about an ancient immortal Scottish warlord guides his younger charges warriors in a grueling set of challenges to discover who will triumph. I've never heard of that. That started in two thousand and two. No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but that was in the. We got a lot of comments because every now and then, like not every now and then, but often mm-hmm. Ben or Lawrence or, or or Matt or Collings will put in a clip of something in a video, and then we get a lot of comments of like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you watch this YouTube, yeah, or yeah. I can't believe you know this show." And I'm like, "I've never seen that before. <laughs> right? I don't know what it is." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Raven there is a recent is. example of that. Or they're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you like Jimmy." You guys the- love Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, you guys love Jimmy the Bucket is my favorite YouTuber. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> also, that's made up. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so but or, it will exist. So. Yeah, and, he, and he's, he might be cancelled. Uh, anyway. We've mentioned this before, but the Incredible Hulk had a bunch oh, yeah. of spin-offs. They, they attempt, yep. we, we recently watched the episode where the trial of the Incredible Hulk, which is just the Daredevil show. Yeah, that's it, not terrible. The Hulk took a real backseat. Uh, and we also, also did, there's a Thor one. Yeah, that's true. We also did Aquaman uh, for the S- Smallville because there mm. was going to be a show called Mercy Reef. That's right. And that's fun. Mm. We, we've obviously talked about Son of the Mask. Uh, the Caravan of Courage. Ewok spin-off movies. Yeah, probably we, we are going to do them at some point. But that was a that was a thing. Uh, what do you th- what do you think? A lot of people also put Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li, but that's not a spin-off. No, I mean it's sort of a spin-off of nothing. Like it is a side story, but yeah, there's not there's no main thing happening. It's not even. It's not even. It's it's like a snake also, eyes it was, origins. It was Ming Na Wen who was uh, Chun Li in uh, in the original. In the original, one, yeah. and this it's Kristen Craig. Exactly. So no, no, and thank no, you. No, no, thank you. No, I've got a couple of fun. Oh, I know. I got to ask you about this. Uh, okay. Where do you, where do you stand on the Alien versus Predator movies? Oh, uh And they are spinoffs of both series. Yes. Do you mean do I like them? Yeah. No. <laughs> But I think Alien vs. Predator Requiem is the better, is the better sequel, even though nobody else, nobody else, I'm the only oh, one in the yeah. world that thinks that. But yeah. uh, there it is. Okay, what about this? I've got two good ones to end on. Okay. And please, feel free to jump in, Mason, at any point. 21 Jump Street have a, had a spin-off called Booker. I remember Booker. So Richard, it had Richard Grieco. Richard Grieco, who was... The greatest man in the world. That's right. He, he, him, he and Johnny Depp headed up that original series, and obviously people have seen the movies, which is also a sequel to the original show, it yep. turns out, because mm-hmm. they're both in those movies, mm-hmm. whatever. They're undercover high schoolers, right? Yes. I mean, everyone's seen the new movies, uh-huh. obviously. But yeah, so that was like a very serious like cop crime drug-busting drama yeah. in mm-hmm. the 80s, right? And it had hot and new stars. Yeah. Charlie Claus and I recently talked about it on Faux Fop because <laughs> okay. we talked about the Hey Hey It's Saturday and Johnny you, Depp appearance. And then you're going to be talking about Booker. <laughs> That's sure. right. Anyway, so, but this is why this doesn't work, right? Go on. Because I'm going to read you the synopsis. Because the idea of, like, going into a high school and you're a cop mm. and you have to pretend to be young, that's kind of fresh and new, I guess, and, like, ooh, exciting and whatever. Mm. But this is, like, Dennis Booker, who was once worked for a large metropolitan police department, is now hired by the... Dennis U- Booker? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Is now hired by the... I would kept that quiet, honestly. <laughs> is now hired by the US office of a large Japanese company to investigate some sus- suspicious insurance claims. Went for a couple of seasons. But wow, insurance, insurance claims. claims. Incredible so there, stuff. Yeah. And How about this, James? Okay. Did we mention this last time? Uh, NCIS is a spin-off of uh, JAG. Uh, maybe in passing. Okay. But that's obviously huge and big, Mason. Huge and big. It's been going for 100 years. It's bigger than JAG. And in fact, NCIS obviously had NCIS LA and probably another one. I agree. Mm. I've got a big one to end on, though. Okay, I'm ready. Big flop, I mean, Mason. Uh-oh. Evan Almighty. <laughs> it's sort of a sequel, but it is more of a spin-off of Bruce Almighty because Evan appears as a minor character, Steve Carell, in the first movie. But then he got famous. Then he got famous. <laughs> so they thought, hey, let's do Noah's Ark. Hey, also, let's put $175 million into this movie for some reason. Mm. And I've seen bits of it. It's not very good or funny. 
And also, he doesn't have god powers. He's got he has to build an ark with animals. Oh yeah, right, right. And it made one hundred and seventy four point four million. So just six hundred thousand oh. shy of breaking even, not including <laughs> marketing, obviously. Wow. Also, I just quickly googled are any of the friends in uh, Joey, and they said oh they were too busy with individual fr- film projects. Also, they literally couldn't afford them because they would have cost about one million dollars per episode. I was going to say and, yeah, they were too busy being very rich. But also like Matt, Le- oh, not um, what's his name. Matt Ch- Chandler's in like Scrubs. <laughs> oh, we didn't even it's talk about like, Scrubs. It's just oh yeah, that's sort of got a sequel. It's got uh, Scrubs interns. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. I know a lot of people hate it, but I thought it was yeah, it's fine. Fine. Yeah, and that's everything that I've got. I mean, there's a trillion billion more. Of course, we 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 do not have time. We'll come back to it another time. No, we won't. We'll, we'll, next time we'll come back to the the episode of um of Gilmore Girls where Milo yes. Ventimiglia's character goes to find his dad in San Francisco or I whatever. I did see a lot of, like, Gilmore Girls, various other spin-offs, and I'm like, I don't know anything about Gilmore Girls. Well, I mean, Supernatural is a spin-off of Gilmore Girls. No, it's not. No, maybe. it's just got, it's the, got, the, it's same got, guy. got the one I'm guy. Like, it's cause, cause, I'm like, is that true? <laughs> oh God, whatever it was. <laughs> there needs to be more mundane drama shows, Mork and Mindy style on Happy yeah. Days, or like Chachi sells his soul to the devil, where it's just... Devil's nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a really mundane show. And that they're means like, the devil has a brother or sister. Mm, it's true. Okay, go on. Yeah. But there just needs to be more where it's a really mundane show and they li- they're like, we like that guy. What if he had telekinetic powers? <laughs> That's kind of like Millennium. What if the guy at the, the, the soda shop had telekinetic powers? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic stuff, Mason. Mm. Do you know what it's time for now? Is it time for what we read? Yep. What we gonna read? I can't believe it, but you're absolutely right. That's right. I'm doing it. Westworld? Whoa. I love talking about what I've been reading. Me and too. What I've been listening to or what I've been watching. And what have you been doing any of those things? Great question, James. Well, we... Uh, we got a little advanced uh, viewing of uh, oh, the, the TV series Moon Knight. Seen a Moon Knight episode. Uh, so there will be a, um, a a video up pretty soon. I That'll think come up Wednesday. Which will be very Moon very Knight exciting. Talks. I wait. I don't think we can say that. Oh, then I'm I'm I have no opinions on it whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, in uh, in uh, I got a little uh, got a little got a little taste of that Oscar Isaac. Yeah. So I watched um, the Card Counter, which is a movie that came out last year. Oh, is that good? It is good. It's okay. um. So it's uh, Oscar Isaac. Yep. It's Tiffany Haddish in a dramatic role. Wow. It's Ty Sheridan. Wow. Cyclops yeah. from some of the X Men movies. I know this. Movie. And Willem Dafoe. And wow. it's basically it. Uh, um, it's uh, Oscar Isaac. He's gone out of prison. I won't. I won't say what 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 why he was in prison or whatever. But uh, and he and he's he's just a guy who who makes his living sort of doing. He he learned to count cards in prison and he's uh, now his living is like. Six or seven days a week, he just goes to various. He drives to various casinos and he does like small, yeah, like card counting, just kind of chips away, like at black it. blackjack, and he makes a little bit of money. But then Ty Sheridan and Tiffany Haddish show up separately, and they're like, "Hey, Oscar Isaac, you want a bit of drama? You want a bit of drama that would be suitable for a does he a, a, a bit a movie? Does that he want drama? Initially, he doesn't, but then he's like, maybe a bit of drama though, mm-hmm. maybe a bit of drama would spice up my weird life of me and being a weirdo. Doing one of those Ocean's Eleven styles, like backflips onto a bank vault or whatever. Like yeah, that, he becomes. They're like, do you want to be? Do you want to be the little oiled up guy in a in a little in a little casino trolley? And he's like, yeah, I am kind of little actually. Why yeah. wouldn't I do that? I yeah. think I'm little. Yeah. I mean, I'm on. Like television, so I look bigger, mm. but I don't know. Am I little? He's he's like five nine, I think, okay. or five eight, something yeah, right. like that. So he's five two, really. <laughs> yeah, true, That's yes. his official height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good. It's good. So, and okay. it's um, what's it, it on? I bought it on YouTube Movies. Wow, that's right. I spent five or six dollars or something to on rent it? or buy. Rent. Yeah, I don't like it when I buy a thing and then it's stuck in my like list of things that I've bought. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah, there's like yeah. three things. It's like one of the versions of Suicide Squad. Yes. The early one. <laughs> Just lurking and there then like, like a trap. And then like a random episode of like It's Always Sunny and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And this movie was directed by Paul Schrader. What's he wrote uh, Taxi Driver. Oh. He's one of, he's one of those guys. It's a, it's a movie. It's a, it's executive produced by The Mark Jimmy Scorsese. Fallon taxi movie. Yeah, taxi. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hasn't that taxi got magic powers or whatever? I don't think it does. No. Wow, imagine if it did, though. That's yeah, the movie I'd want to yeah, watch yeah, yeah, yeah. and make. Yeah. Anyway, he's written and directed a bunch of stuff, and it's a good movie. Terrific. Very stylish. Oh, stylish, you yes. say? Yes. Now, here's something that I've been watching, Mason, that I know you've also watched. Go uh, on. I've watched some episodes of Jack Reacher on Amazon Oh, did Prime. you? What do you think of it? 
It's all right. I know a lot of people like love it or whatever. How did you, of all people, get onto this? How did you find any spare time in your life it to get, watch it's any episodes up and whatever? Oh, okay. Anyway, right, right. so it's interesting because at the start he's like he doesn't talk for like twenty minutes the first yep. episode, but then uh-huh. he doesn't shut the fuck up for the rest of it. I thought his whole thing was he's stoic and he only spoke when he needed to no, say anything. No, he's one of those. Guys. But he does not stop explaining shit to everybody right. all the time, mm-hmm. like colleagues. Cops he likes, cops he hates, wives of people who have just been murdered. Before he beats up a person, he explains their strengths and weaknesses, yep. and then he then he hits him with a bottle in the head or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's just like, like it, it's a solid show. Don't get me yeah. wrong, and he's he's a great Jack Reacher, yeah. and it is well cast all around. But it's just a little like. Oh, look, the best man in the world's doing a yeah, thing. Yeah, terrific. What you have to settle into is it is a show. Like, he is the TV equivalent of, like, most of The Rock's characters. In that he's yes. just... You're there to cheer on a guy who's just steamrolling everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no... There, I mean, there, there are a couple of... Uh, not not It's not really a spoiler, but, you know, there'll be a, there will be a couple of L sequences later on where, like, maybe somebody yeah. gets, it, gets over on him. But it's like you, you look at the scene and go... Why did it work then and it didn't work every other episode? Like exactly, why did yeah. why did you catch him by surprise then when every single other time somebody went to catch him by surprise and he's like, I know you're there and I've got fifteen ways to yeah. you know, defeat you from this position or whatever, you know? And you're right, he does all that he has Sherlock powers where he's like, You're divorced because you're sad and you look to the left. <laughs> And you got Is that why they got divorced? <laughs> You're too much looking to the left. Your wife hated it. You ended up in the arms of another man. Yeah, I think it's also very much one of those shows where, like, I'd imagine a lot of people be like, this is me. This is, that's exactly this what is it is. A, well, yeah, I, I mean, the steamroller. And maybe that's why I don't like it as much because I'm like, this is not me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, I could not vault that fence. Let me tell you. I could. I, what I have to do is I'd have to keep walking until I found a low point of the fence, yeah, maybe yeah. a bit where the fence had like bit of bit of broken off. But you could climb through a and I could just barely lift, through. I could barely lift my foot over my knee. Just like, ah, oh, this is. Oh. Look, Jeez. but it's not. I mean, it's entertaining. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But mm. yeah, I I I, I don't know because I heard people like it's amazing, and I'm oh, like, did yeah, I say no, that? I don't know if you did, but no, I, I heard people it say it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's solid, you know. Yeah. And I get why people like yeah. it, but it's. They also had to give him. Like the fifty caliber Desert Eagle, like the biggest yeah. handgun that exists on Earth, so he would have a gun that looks normal in his hand. <laughs> he's so big, yeah, he's adorable. But again, Alan Richardson is it? Uh, Alan Richardson. Yeah, he's is, he's really good. I think and he's. Very, I'd yeah. like to see him in like because he's kind of he's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's and been he's been, in been behind the scenes in a bunch of stuff, Smallville, or whatever. But it's I it's honestly great that he's like got his own show and people are liking it. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Now, I said uh, last week I'd do some festival recommendations, comedy festival wow, I love recommendations. Festivals. Hasn't started yet. It is starting this coming week, I think. Wow. Maybe, maybe middle of this week. Wow. Um, so, uh, friends of the show, Andy Matthews, and <sighs> if you're in Melbourne, friends of the show, Ooh, Andy I'm Matthews, now said Trombley Virtual have a show called My Client is Innocent. Every word has inverted commas around it, and it's some sort of silly play. Yes. A couple of silly boys. For people that don't know, in Australia they work, they write on a show called Mad as Hell. Yes, which is that's a, right. Which is a, uh, network it's a real show. show. It is a, it's a real show. And not only that, show. it's a very good show. A very good show. So yeah. they write on that, and they do like a, a like a blend of smart and silly comedy. If you did want to uh, check out any of their stuff and you're not in the area, their last show, Teleport, they filmed? Yeah, it's, right? on, it's, it's tele- on the Stupid Old Studios website. Yeah, you can I check think. it out. You can give it a look, see yeah. and give it a purchase. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't start for a couple of weeks, but I'm, but I'm going to recommend it in advance. A uh, friend of the show, Michael Williams, has a show called Colonel, Ooh, which is he, a he crushed it last year, didn't he? As well, was it last year? No, maybe. did you do one last year? Because of all the pandemic, I can't, I can't remember. remember. Can't remember who did one and who didn't last yeah, year. Yeah, but he's yeah. written a musical about the life of Colonel Sanders. Oh, that's fun. And it's uh, it's him and uh, he's 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 put together a crew called the Nibble Pie Players, and they're they're doing a show about uh, about uh, 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 Colonel Excellent. Colonel Sanders, and finally. Um, Another friend of the show, Beck Petratus, yeah, and Kate Dennett have a show called Swamped, where they, they it's a, like a like a comedy play about like entrepreneurs having a, having a big week. Now that's fun. So that should be funny, and I'll do I'll and do some more recommendations great, next yeah. week. So um, terrific. Yeah. Well, I'm going to recommend that we move to the next segment of the show. Oh, can I recommend you give me five seconds because I was looking up comedy festival shows and I didn't have time. To search for this the, is you. You're yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I know. Yeah, yep. I know. But just you could have used that time to look up the letters. I name. did. All part of my plan, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> oh, did you? Did Classic you? Classic one. Oh, like the letters, <laughs> oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters.
Wow, this is a segment of the show where we say to you, hey, you got any letters to send to us? Please do. You can actually do it via Gmail. Hey! Weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Mm. You could also hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter also if you are so inclined. Or you could run into me in the street and give me a physical letter. What? Mason. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a manila, a little manila envelope. That's right. Half, uh, what's this, an A5? I'd say, yeah, it's maybe an A5. Yeah, it looks, it's been folded, so it looks like it's been, right. in, been in the pocket for a while there. Yeah, yeah. No, He's, no, it wasn't folded when he gave it oh, to me. Oh, it was in I your pocket. Yeah, well, immediately. That's, James, James, that's how I know you're getting divorced. Because you're always folding your manila. <laughs> your manila and look into the in left. Pocket. Yeah, and put, put your, your bloody wife arms of another man. <laughs> anyway, carry on. <laughs> Would you like to read the letter or would you like me to read the oh, letter? I'd love Mason. to read the letter. All right, here we go. I'll, oh, I'll hand exciting. it over to you. This one oh. fell. Does it have anthrax in it? Who knows? We should give us, I'll give a sniff. <laughs> <laughs> Should I reveal this first? Yeah, no, let's do it at the end. Okay. (laughs) Dear James and Mason, speaking of reboots set in the 60s, uh, asterisk, I think you mentioned a Bond reboot set in the 60s. We probably did. That sounds like something I would do. Uh, I've always thought the MCU Fantastic Four reboot would be great if it was set in the 1960s. The original costumes, weird technology, and quaint family dynamics would sit well in that period rather than trying to reimagine it into a modern setting, which has never really worked. Perhaps in the first movie they go into space at the end, and when they get back, time has passed to the present due to relativity, moving at the speed of light, etc. Science yeah. checks out. Uh, and it would be fun to see them meet the rest of the MCU heroes in the modern era. Yours sincerely, Phil. P.S. The $10 is not legal tender. <laughs> so he's included a, what looks at first blush to be to be a real... Looks crisp and real. A, a ten, a, an, a, an Australian $10 note or bill, uh, but actually it's been photoshopped, uh, so our faces are on both sides. Pretty impressive Photoshop, right? if you don't mind me saying so either, Mason. Very good. Who am I? Am I Banjo Patterson here? I think so. I'm Banjo and Patterson. And I'm the other person on the tenor. You're the lady on the tenor. Yeah. Oh, those, that's great. Fantastic, Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. How did you run into this person? Well, you know, I'm just out and about, Mason. Yeah, I don't want to give away anybody's location. Yeah, but I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving around town a bit yeah, more these days, true. you know what I mean? Now, mm. that, uh, now that my kids are slightly grown up. And I'm just I'm just hitting the I'm hitting the burbs I'm hitting the city you know what I mean. So you're saying karate class? That's, that's where you're right. Karate you're class. You had the same about. karate yeah, class. Yeah, exactly. We have the same divorce lawyer. Anyway, so um on that topic of Fantastic Four though, Peyton Reed wanted to do his version yeah. set in the '60s, didn't he? Yes, that's right. Do you think there's a chance because they're always doing a callback and whatever? And we've probably talked about this before that that's the version they're going to go with, like the Fantastic Four lost in the I '60s. I hope so. Yeah. Austin Powers style. What, quantum realm. Reappear, quantum realm. Whatever. They could even go. I remember that little dark patch of space in the quantum realm during yeah qu- maybe they'll do it in quantum mania that's right maybe, like, yeah. maybe he you know maybe like ant-man you know original ant-man knows them so that would be a, yeah, yeah. a good place to, oh that to would fold be good yeah in. yeah anyways apparently i don't even remember doing this or I vaguely remember i think we said if you see us give us a physical letter but there has to be ten dollars in it there it is so, yeah perfect also if you do happen to run into us don't don't literally give us $10. No. Like, so that's, you no. don't have to. I mean, we won't read it. But, we have uh, <laughs> plenty of $10 of our <laughs> that's own. That's right. But thank you very much, Phil, for uh, keeping that on your person and also <laughs> putting in the effort. Really appreciate it. Uh, here's, a, here's an email from, uh, from Matthew. Hello. I almost died while listening to your podcast... Brackets, not clickbait. All right. Hey, James and Mason. So the other day I was listening to the pod while driving home from picking up dinner. Ooh, lucky for some. I know, right? Uh, While I was entering the highway, an (gasps) 18-wheeler on the uh, access road missed the entrance and decided it was a good idea to cut across two lanes of traffic while also deciding to decelerate to maybe 10 miles an hour on the highway. Blooming heck. All while this was happening... They want it. They missed. So they missed the. They missed. Oh, okay. They were going to miss the the, yep. the exit. I think. Okay. Just okay. Gonna, okay. Ah, uh, all while this was happening, you said something hilarious. Oh, lucky for some. And I was too busy laughing to apply the brakes, only doing so at the last possible second, stopping maybe two feet from the truck. Jeez. My car was fine. I flipped off the driver of the truck and proceeded on my way. But my food, which was in the passenger seat, was flung forward and I hit the brakes and was promptly ruined. Oh, no. Anyway, keep up the good work, Matthew. Sounds like we owe Matthew $10. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to get it, though. No, I don't no, think so. That's right. Maybe we'll keep We've got dinner to spill in our cars. That's right. Oh, man, well, I'm glad you're not dead. Yes, I wonder same. if there's anybody who's, like, listened and died and we don't know. What a great thing to bring up. But I've also <laughs> wondered that. <laughs> I hope not, Mason. Mm. I don't mind telling you. Do you think, just to make it a bit more positive, because you've really dragged the vibe around. Uh, uh, dragged, oh, I'm dragging a vibe you've around. around. But you've dragged it down specifically. Oh. And what I'm saying is I think probably there's somebody who's maybe like they're listening to the podcast and they've dug up like a magical jewel and they've become immortal. Okay. You know, and they've they've shot out into space. I don't care about that. Yeah, no, nah, it's What's not What's that got to do with me? I don't know, but they're not going to give us $10, are they? 
Nah. Mm. I don't even want any of those magical powers. I don't want any of that. They're like, you get infinite space powers. You can Nah, fuck it. No. <laughs> Leave me alone. I got to finish Jack Reacher. Yeah. <laughs> this show that I don't really like. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want the magical space powers? Yes. I mean, what do you think is going to happen at the end of Jack Reacher? <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty formulaic. I mean, he's got to... It's gonna probably be a big shootout or something. I Have mean, you seen it? I mean, I mean, I watched a few episodes, but I thought it was kind of a <laughs> foregone conclusion. And 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 also, he's gonna to go to another town in the next season. So I mean, why? I'm, what am I going to fall in love with all these characters and then I'm not going to get to see them again? I think there'll be some recurring characters. He might make a phone call or something. Oh, a phone call. That's very... <laughs> but wow. Wow, I'm going to commit to a, a whole season for a phone. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, he's gonna call the. He's gonna call the the detective. Is he? I don't want the gem. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, do you have any other letters? Uh, I do have another letter. I do have another letter. Okay, give Not us a physical letter. letter. All right. This is from Touched Elf. Oh. Uh, they, uh, well, I think we've had this before, and we're like, is it is it Touche Delf? You know it's probably I mean? Touche Delf. But it's not. Yeah. It is, oh, uh, right. just, just to clarify. Oh. Because I've been having a really terrible few days, I'd like to request- You ever seen any Delfs on the internet? What is that? Never mind. <laughs> what is that? There's a Dilf reference, but I don't. Okay, so that's- it doesn't matter. That, James, it's not all gold. Sometimes this is just workshop. Oh, that's not like a weird thing. I'd look up and then I'd be like, well, now I know that forever. No, no, no. Okay, it's just, I, went, I went MILF, DILF, DELF. <laughs> okay. Touche, DELF. Very good. You know? Uh, that's because, how my mind works. That's a fun little insight and how really it works or doesn't work. amazing. Thank you. Uh, but because I've been having a really terrible few days, sorry to hear that. That sucks. Uh, I'd like to request some positivity. What's the best thing that happened to each of you this week? By the way, it's pronounced touched elf. Oh, touche, elf. I know, right? Long story. <laughs> just say, just say, Amanda. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Oh uh, yeah, what 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 what's a, what's a good thing that's happened to you, Mason? I love driving around my stupid little car. <laughs> I got a, this is a while ago, but I guess I got a stupid little car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I drive around in it. You take honking at take people? the top down. You honking at people? You honking at people? Sometimes I'm honking at people. Are you wearing a hat when you're taking the top down? No, because there not... is a hat in the boot though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave me a hat when I bought the car. Don't you think like if you weren't like if you go on top down, your hat mm. off, right? I mean, I'd yeah, I think off. I would. I would fear that I lo- that I was losing losing my hat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But here's the thing that did happen. I'm I in the sun. I think I, think I mentioned. If you're bored in sunscreen, yeah, yeah. I guess. I think I mentioned this to you. I, I stopped at a roundabout. Yeah. Um, and because there was a car coming, you know, on the side there, and you got to you got to wait for the the oncoming car. And a guy behind me honked his horn because I wasn't wasn't just screaming into the, yeah. into the into the roundabout. So what I did is I just I just stopped there and I just I just pulled the roof <laughs> like I wound the roof back and then I just gave him the finger. Yeah, fuck him. It's fun. I hate that shit. What a what a delight. Yeah. That is, you can you can do that every day of the week now. I did. Yeah. I do. Cool. Well, that's yeah. fun. What have you been up to that you've been uh, doing? Well, is there something to do with family and friends and bloody, yes, bloody Mason, kids or whatever? I didn't buy a fancy little car well. like a little Lord Fauntleroy <laughs> flipping off the general public around town. <laughs> <laughs> but a um, couple of things. I caught up with some uh, uni friends oh. uh, on Friday, which was good fun. I drank way too much, and that was, uh, but it was it was good fun. <laughs> this uh, this episode was going to be recorded yesterday, but yeah. I got a text that was just like, no, no, nah, not happening. So. <laughs> Um, the other thing and is... That's what I know. I got a physical letter. That, that uni friends are around. It's true. Mm. Uh, I, I Not got Insensitive fi- Dave. No, no, he was there. Insensitive Dave he was, was there. there. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I got a, yeah, I got a physical letter, which mm. was good. Yeah. Um, also, a couple, I've been playing uh, the new Kirby game with my son. Oh, yeah. Which, is a, which he's been talking about for like months. He's like, when are we getting this bloody Kirby game? I'm gonna, <laughs> so we went and got it. We were playing that together. And my daughter has started dance lessons, and it's really fun to see her... She's just loving it. She's loving herself sick in the dance studios. We're in there. We're doing little dances and stuff. Oh, I know a fun thing that happened this week. You showed me a video of her running into another kid and falling over. <laughs> That's true. I did show you that as well. Yeah. yeah, but she's loving it. And she's like the littlest one there by like quite a bit. And huh. it's just very ador- adorable. Okay. Anyways, uh, Touched Elf. Real name, Amanda. I hope those were okay stories. There you go. Mason's was mean though and cruel. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's who I've become, James. I know. What else, Mason? I listen to ABC Classic FM in my little car. <laughs> I've become the exact thing that I hate, the real me. <laughs> the view you've been trying to Yeah, suppress. that's right. Yeah. Terrific stuff. Uh, here's one more email. This is from Aiden. Okay, Aiden. Uh, he says, uh, moving out is his, uh, his, his subject line. Moving here. out. Uh, I started listening to you guys around when I started year eight. I'd listen on the long bus trip and on long late night walks. After wow. a week, I'd caught up. I started rationing new episodes as they came out or re-listening to your earliest episodes. Wow. Uh, by the time I'd re-listened to all, them all, I got my school iPad and started watching the movies and shows you'd recommend and what you're going to read. Awesome. Uh, as an autistic kid who often found medium movies and movie-related commentary straining, your casual and non-judgmental analysis completely changed my relationship to media. In so many ways, you helped me become more confident and sociable. 
Every week I felt like I got to partake in the kinds of conversations I could never uh, manage myself. It felt like my friends. That's really nice of I'm you I'm moving say, out yeah. of home now into a crummy unit I bought. It's all very overwhelming. Uh, tonight is my last night here, and I'm on my last late night long walk around here for a while in order to try and deal with the nostalgia I knew that I had to listen to your latest episode, uh, followed by your first. It's really helped me to feel all the things I felt back then. That's uh, Thanks from Aiden. Congratulations on all of yeah. that. That's really cool, getting their own place and moving yeah. out. And I love a night walk. I don't so much do them anymore because I'm, I'm a drunk. But... Um, <laughs> We, that was like, that was instead of podcasting, we used to night walk. That's true, yeah. 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 So there you go. The technology wasn't there to walk and record things. Because, no, you know, I was going to make a joke about this spooky house, but that was from another thing we recorded about where we record. <laughs> it was in the Moon Knight thing that we yeah, did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. That's great, though. Yeah. I love hearing stuff like that. Me and I too. love things in general. You know what I love more than anything, though? What's that? When you wrap up the show, it's my favorite <laughs> thing in the world. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Because it means he's bloody gone home. Oh. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for listening to the show. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for telling your friends about it. And thank you for leaving a five-star review on whatever platform you happen to use. Yeah, really yeah, helps yeah. other people find it, apparently. That's true. Through this an algorithm? From, uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, until, like, you know, all of these platforms just decide to only promote the podcast that they play exclusively for then this is helpful, allegedly. Mm, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Anyway, it's from Doke Boy Fresh. He says, two great mates, James and Meso, seem like two cool dudes, and I enjoy all their insight here on the pod and YouTube. Hope this review makes me the official agriculture teacher slash FFA advisor of the pod. Cheers. Yes, it does, actually. And this is from Datalo Way, who says, appreciation. Hey, big fan, been watching since I was 15. I'm now 20, about to turn 21. Mm. Mm. And I watch a lot of you guys on YouTube and listen Matt to every podcast. Co- Sorry, I watch a lot of uh, guys on YouTube and listen to podcasts and just easily forgot about them. But you guys, you guys are different. Every Sunday after Mass, I'll look forward to your videos. Then somewhere down the line, I just started listening to the pod. Probably has something to do with me. Just wanted to hear your guys' opinions on whatever happened that week. Just sense of humor resonates with me more than it probably should because I have a similar relationship with my good friend, uh, friend, probably my best friend, who's now in the Air Force. And you know, it's tough sometimes. I miss how it used to be and you guys bring it back for me in a way. Love you, don't don't stop. Uh, Don't ever always sorry love you both don't stop ever always keep going whoa we won't i might might. yeah Yeah. we might probably might but not right now yeah yeah that's right folks if you want to get into contact with us you can go to weekly planet pod at gmail at facebook at twitter at Bandcamp. yeah Uh, you can go to the planet broadcasting great mates facebook group you can also go to the weekly planet pod subreddit and discord have some fun podcast and pop culture related chats why don't you yeah if you want to follow some people on social media you can follow our friend rob collings he's at raw collings on twitter he's at the weekly planet on twitter that's right i'm wikipedia brown on twitter and i'm nick meso on instagram james is mr sunday movies Everywhere. Everywhere. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck, chuck in any amount you want. Give 50 us cents? One, million dollars? Give us one dollar. Give us one dollar. Or whatever, or nothing. <sighs> but I mean, yeah, yeah, up, up to you. We don't care. Times are tough out there. I we agree. Don't exactly. Just, yeah. it's, what is the thing about slip out of your pocket and whatever? Yeah, if, if you if didn't you, miss it. If you wouldn't miss the amount, whatever, don't add the amount of money that you, you would miss if you lost it. Or don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Mm. What else, Mason? Give us Give us a fake ten dollars on the street. Yes, that's right. Uh, or if you're a big spender, you can go to bigsandwich.co. You can sign up for nine US dollars per month. All sorts of bonus content, as we've mentioned, movie commentaries and bonus uh, stuff. You know? Yeah, there is. We did, as we mentioned, we did a Morbius book club. That's right. Um, we did other things, didn't we? We did that and other things. Yeah, that's right. Uh, folks, we've got T-shirts on tpublic.com. You just search for The Weekly Planet or go to redbubble.com and search for Rob at Bat and Bat. If you're still in a Rob at Bat and Bat <laughs> buy a T-shirt, buy in mind. Why wouldn't you be? Buy one for the, the Blu-ray release. Exactly. Go see The Batman again. Uh, did you see to- The Batman again? I only saw no, it I one. know. I only saw it once. I saw it one time. Yeah. Do we yeah. have a Morbius-related T-shirt? No. No. Well, that's something to think about. It in is. The- <laughs> In the couple of days we have until that movie becomes irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, you can do that. And thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk going to rack them for all our musical themes. We forgot to do Snake Eyes again. It's just occurred to oh me. Oh, my God. And that's a spin-off in a way, isn't you know, it? No. No, no we, we established that's probably last why week. We didn't do it. Yeah, 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 that's right. Great, 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 great. Uh, that's the whole show, folks. Next week. Oh, my God. Here I it is. I cannot wait. More BS. Yes. More BS. Then less BS. Yes, then no BS. That's right. I'll tell exactly. you that much. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that gem. You guys, we will see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. No sting at the end. Oh. Because it's marketing. You remember, right? Look, I don't understand marketing. Do you remember, though? Yes. Okay, good. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, bye. <laughs>